Namaskaram everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. I hope you are all uh, safe and healthy. And uh, before we get started with the session, a couple of uh, housekeeping rules. Welcome to the Crowdcast environment. Uh, the, for anybody who is new to Crowdcast, let me quickly give you a tour of what features we have here. To your right, you have the chat box where you can uh, interact with uh, the fellow audiences and uh, and with me. If you have any specific questions to ask me, though, there is an ask a question section at the bottom. If you can click on it, and if you have any specific questions due in the duration of this uh, talk, you can type it there. And uh, anybody who has the same question can upvote or downvote it. Uh, so it, the questions that are relevant to the larger audiences get on top, and I can answer them first. And um, welcome, welcome. And first of all, uh, we would love to thank all our patrons who are present here. It is because of you guys that we are able to conduct this talk and all all of this setup and and our equipment and all our layouts and all all tasks and all of our teams are enabled with your generous support. So thank you all for uh, for you for being with us and uh, for enabling us to do our activities. Now, uh, in the structure of the session is going to be something like this. We'll uh, look at the sutras of Patanjali Yoga Sutras step by step. We'll look at them in clusters. They are they can be grouped into seven plus one themes. So all the fifty-one sutras of the first chapter can be themed or grouped into seven plus one different segments. So we'll look at them segment by segment, and then at the end of the segment, I'll look at question and answer section, and whichever questions are relevant to that particular part, I'll take it. And uh, before even we get started with the first sutra of the first chapter. The first pada of Patanjali Yoga Sutra is called as Samadhi Pada. I'd like to. Uh, I think it's important that I give you a quick introduction about myself and uh, why I consider myself. You know what what makes me eligible to even approach uh, the teaching of Yoga Sutras. Uh, so I do not claim. I cannot claim to be a master of yoga by any any uh, means. The best that I can claim for myself is that I'm a yoga sadhaka. and i've been really fortunate in my life to have had some practices some extremely powerful practices which gave me glimpses of what yoga sutra means in fact my uh, journey of yoga itself the practices of yoga or yoga sadhana started because of my knowledge in sanskrit what i can claim for for myself is a reasonable mastery over sanskrit language and english to some extent so what i can uh, so in, as i was saying my uh, journey of yoga and yoga sadhana started with uh, when i was uh, dabbling in sanskrit almost a decade ago i was just learning sanskrit language and and picking up uh, uh, picking up all sorts of literature diverse sets of literature just for just, just out of that linguistic curiosity to just explore and i had no idea of of the spiritual depths and uh, all the possibilities that uh, some of these texts have to offer i was just look reading kavyas poetry and uh, approaching everything with a literary perspective but because of yoga sutras when you when i stumbled across yoga sutras this is what started me started that spark in me as to uh, exploring these textual aspects as life truths so i i knew that the text of patanjali yoga sutras was something which is extremely valuable but at the not at the same time not true in my experience and that is when i started exploring uh techniques and processes which will get me to that state of experience from textual knowledge and uh, to my uh, immense uh, luck uh, it's been it's been the both these pursuits have been mutually complementary my study of sanskrit has deepened the experience deepened the uh, and and intensified my uh, desire for sadhana and my practices and my sadhana has added more layers of of uh, truth to what i was learning as just a text so having said that uh, said that background to today's in today's talk whatever i'm going to talk about is from a combination of my knowledge in sanskrit and so we'll be looking at words their meanings how they are, what their dhatus or the root sounds are what they mean and uh, we'll I, i'll also try to uh, to add a little bit of uh, meaning or a little bit of 
weight to that textual knowledge with whatever I have been able to uh, grasp or experience as truth for myself. It's not absolute truth. There are multiple interpretations from many, many saints, from Swami Vivekananda and Shankaracharya himself, and have written commentaries to Yoga Sutras. And all of them uh, vary slightly. Some of them go to elaborate depths to talk about uh, each sutra for multiple hours altogether. But uh, we have just started 10 a.m. I have not set a deadline as to these. It is going. This session is going to be for these many particular hours. So I don't know how long it's going to be. There are 51 sutras to cover in first chapter, based on uh, how we feel about it, how many questions there are, or how how quickly we can progress through them. We'll be able to do this. One thing again about crowd uh, crowdcast platform is on the top right you'll be able to see, top left you'll be able to see that this is the session one of four sessions. So all the other sessions as well, the next three sessions, which are going to happen on next three consecutive Sundays leading up to International Day of Yoga, are also accessible through the same link, which is crowdcast.io forward slash e forward slash yoga sutras. So you, there are no uh, different links for different events. Once you're here, you will I'm, I'm sure you'll get accustomed to this environment. Uh, reasonably comfortable by the end of this session and you should all be able to access the next sessions as well through the same link but the session there will be the, you know if you click on that top left icon you'll see the links for you know this uh, environments for all the other three consecutive sessions as well uh, all right i think all the uh, all the housekeeping rules are, are done we can now dive into the topic of yoga sutras itself and one uh, one more uh, one more <laughs> i don't want to call it a disclaimer but one more in point that i want to put across before we proceed is that yoga is not somebody's idea it's not a thought process it's not a philosophy it's not a theory yoga is how life functions in general it's you, the literal meaning of yoga is union and what our pursuit is is to understand and experience and know how that union is union already is in existence and live that truth within ourselves it's not something that has to be grasped as an idea it's not that by the end of uh, end of these four sessions also we'll we'll all be yogis this is this pursuit is only to guide us to enable us in our pursuits this is by and of course uh, patanjali maharshi being the being the maharshi that he is uh, all these yoga sutras have this benefit of uh, of being sadhana in themselves so a chant of yoga sutras a repeated manana in of each sutra of yoga sutras has the potential to reveal its own truths to oneself with, and of course it is very important to get the right guru be guided with the right practice and be empowered with that practice which will take one to deeper and deeper states of meditativeness and becoming a yogi but in our pursuit we'll keep it to as uh, as textual a pursuit as possible we'll look at as i said before we'll look at the sanskrit aspects of it and we'll i'll try to corroborate those uh, those sanskrit concepts those words with my own understanding of it all right so the what we are going to learn in the next few uh, sutras, the process in which we are, the process with, in which we are going to approach the study of these sutras is like this. We'll learn how to chant it without any mispronunciations. All the students of Vakshuddhi might already be aware of how uh, what uh, how you know what a stickler I am for the right pronunciation. It, and uh, there, there are also multiple instances and examples that give why it is important to utter the sounds, especially of Sanskrit, extremely right. In, in, even a small one-syllable mistake can completely change the meaning of what is being uttered. So we learn to chant each Yoga Sutra clearly. Uh, then we look at uh, the word-by-word -word, uh, meaning of... Uh, we look at the component, individual component words of each Sutra and we learn the meaning of it. And then we'll try to internalize it with uh, the, the objective of both of these both chanting and knowing the meaning of it, meaning the, uh, knowing the meaning of the individual words in it, is to internalize that sutra, is to live 
that sutra as experiential reality even if this uh, with this session itself it doesn't sink in as as strongly as it should i'll uh, pr- uh, leave you with some practices by the end of this session if this in itself the chant of yoga sutra in itself is a practice but there are m- m- many other practices which are uh, some of which require powerful initiations some of which are uh, uh, are free and accessible to everybody and are safer to practice on their own, learn and practice on their own so we'll learn uh, how to internalize all these aspects of yoga sutras as truths for our own selves all right i hope i have given enough disclaimers and and set enough context the first adhyaya the first chapter or the first pada yoga sutra the text itself almost 190 plus sutras is divided into four components called as samadhi pada sadhana pada vibhuti pada and kaivalya pada in today's chapter in today's session we are going to look at the samadhi pada of yoga sutras which talks about this state of samadhi this in the next subsequent 51 sutras of samadhi pada we look at different states of samadhi what samadhi means what yoga means in general what are different states of uh, the how to get into different states of uh, different deeper and deeper states of uh, meditativeness called as samadhi and this uh, the first thing is prathamaha means the first adhyaya is the chapter or the topic of study so the first chapter is samadhi pada the chant of it is something like this mm. प्रथमोध्याय समाधि पाद इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू डिस्टिंग्विश बिटवीन दिस थ साउंड हियर एंड द ध साउंड इट इज नॉट प्रथमोध्याय और यु नो प्रथमोध्याय डोंट मिक्स अप द थ साउंड एंड द ध साउंड दे हैव टू बी वेरी क्लियर इट इज प्रथमोध्याय इट इज कॉल्ड समाधि पाद वी लुक एट द फर्स्ट सूत्र and before we get there get there there is a shloka of an invocatory shloka of on uh, maharshi patanjali before we chant we start with the sutras of uh, patanjali yoga sutras we'll invoke maharshi patanjali using this shloka let us first look at uh, individual words of this shloka and then learn how to chant it yogena chittasya padena vacham मलम शरीर से वैद्यक प्रवर मुनीना पतंजलि प्राजलिरानस्मी योगेन थ्रू योग चित्त ऑफ चित्त सो लेट मी सो द बेसिक वर्ड टू अंडरस्टैंड एनी श्लोक इज टू कैच होल्ड ऑफ द वर्ब इन इट और द एक्शन इन इट द एक्शन इन इट इज आनत अस्मी दिस इज द keyword this is the action word that is happening anatosmi means i bow down to nata is bowing down natmastak hona you might have heard so nata is bowing down asmi is i am i am in, i am in reverence towards and i bow down to patanjalim to sage patanjali pranjali so anjali mudra is this bringing the palms together this in itself is a symbol of yoga bringing the right half and the left half together is a symbol of yoga and it's a mudra in itself it's called as the anjali mudra with that anjali mudra you might have seen uh, patanjali being depicted with this anjali mudra in many of his statues so with that anjali mudra i bow down to sage patanjali patanjalim pranjali rana tosmi who what kind of sage is sage patanjali pravaram muninam among the sages among the munis pravaram the best the highest the most exalted of munis pravaram muninam pat patanjalim pranjali anatosmi now what did he this patanjali do why is he such an exalted being because he did three things he uh, removed the impurities he cleansed malam malam is the impurity apakarot is the one who removed yah is the one who apakarot the one who removed what did he remove malam the impurities tam to that person tam is to that person 
malam is impurity yah the one who apakarot the one who removed tam to that pravaram muni nam to that exalted um, of sages patanjali to sage patanjali pranjali with the anjali mudra anatah asmi i bow down to i hope this is clear and what did the what three things did he do what kind of impurities did he cleanse chittasya of chitta chitta is one of the aspects of mind it can be thought of as mind in general but it is one of the aspects of mind uh, vacham of speech vak is speech vacham is of speech and sharira sharira is the body he removed the mala of chitta vak and sharira chittasya vacham sharirasya through what did he uh, remove these impurities yogena chittasya through the study of yoga he removed the impurity of chitta through pada he is maharshi patanjali also has treatises on vyakarana shastra and through the constructs of padas he removed the impurities of vak vacham padena vacham and through vaidyaka or through medicine he removed the impurities of body so yogena chittasya padena vacham vaidyakena sharirasya through yoga the impurities of mind through pada through speech through uh, vyakarana the impurities of vak or speech and through medicine the impurities of body the sage the exalted sage who removed the impurities of all these three aspects of human life through these techniques and tools i bow down to that sage patanjali let us now chant the first invocatory shloka of patanjali yoga sutras yogena chittasya padena vacham malam sharirasya cha vaidyakena yopakaro ಪ್ರವರಂ the pdf files which, which are very helpful uh, in uh, understanding and and following the contents of this course so that you can download it to any other device and then uh, watch it and you can listen to this as a podcast and then go through that pdf and it will be useful for your self study all right we can get started with the first sutra atha yoga anushasanam the first four sutras form a cluster form a segment of yoga sutras they talk about what is yoga and why is it why to do yoga why is it even necessary so the first four sutras form a segment we can call we can call this segment and as what is yoga and why uh, patanjali says atha and now yoga anushasanam there are three words here there is atha and yoga and anushasanam these three words the little meaning is atha is after all this after probably bhoga after looking at all sorts of things in life eventually arriving at this point where we are at now we sa- we yoga anushasanam we start anushasan you might have heard which means which literally means ruling which a rule or uh, you know a command this is it can be interpreted as discipline anushasanam is not a discipline or not a rule which somebody else has imposed but which is self imposes a self discipline so in the first sutra itself patanjali says yoga is not the what he is going to talk about what as yoga and and the concepts of yoga now are not philosophies or ideas but it's self discipline at the end of the day but why is that self discipline needed what does it bring to people what does it bring to us when we uh, do that self discipline of yoga is mentioned in the next a few sutras the first one is hath yoga anushasanam the next sutra says defines yoga in general and one more thing guys is uh, you might have also noticed the sketches below they are uh, 
we try to be depictive of what the meaning is of each sutra so that it it adds as a kind of a, a visual aid in uh, understanding and grasping the essence of uh, each sutra and it also acts as a reminder that it's not at the level of just words you have to it it, it is a state of being it's a, it's experientially known so think of these visualize these as images and not just as words in your head so the the deeper it goes the the more you are you are able to internalize it the better it is after oh there are already uh, questions <laughs> okay okay let me quickly look at questions so far all right so the first sutra is ath yoga anushasanam the next sutra says yoga chitta vritti nirodha there are three words here yoga chitta vritti nirodha yoga is basically nirodha niruddha or nirodha is control is cessation or stopping or or mastery control these are uh, many words that are uh, uh, that can be used to interpret the meaning of nirodha many people have interpreted in many ways but the exact meaning of nirodha niruddha is stopping or bringing to a halt what are we bringing to a halt chitta vritti this is made of two words chitta and vritti so one of these aspects of the mind has uh these activities vritti many uh, indian languages also has this word it is usually uh used in the context of an of a duty but it has this it comes from the root sound the same sound as vritta which means a circle vritta i i guess many of you in many indian languages know that it's a circle so it says and because it vritti the word vritti is used to denote this activity because it has a cyclical nature to it it is not something that is done consciously but it is done compulsively and it goes on in its own cycles and to bring a halt to bring those compulsive activities of one of the aspects of mind called chitta to a stop is yoga yoga chitta vritti nirodha the next sutra says tada and will the next consecutive sutras will actually go into what those vrittis are different types of those so do not worry if uh, you i mean do not feel that it's all uh, you know we are not going deep enough all these will be defined later on in the next sutras but the third sutra in the third sutra he answers why why should we bring a halt to it what will happen when those compulsive cyclical activities are brought to a halt tada the word tada means and then drashtuh swarupe sorry drashtuh swarupe avasthanam avasthanam sthiti sthanam is situating in or being established in uh, avasthanam being established in drashtuh swarupa swarupa is in the form in of who of drashta of drashta is drashtuh of the seer drishti it comes from the word drishti to the one who the process of seeing is darshanam at the the power to see is drishti and the one who uh, sees is drashta and of that drashta is drashtuhu and then tada drashtuhu swarupe avasthanam who is the one who sees oh, this is all personal this is about one's own self so within you when you think about it if if there is uh, there are all these activities going on cyclically in the mind there is somebody at the background who is experiencing all of this who is the witness to all of these events that are happening so the the that sense of being me the sense of if i am uday so at this age i i know that i am i'm, I'm t- conducting a class i'm taking this i i have all of this going on i have the sense of all the sensory inputs coming in the one who sees and experiences all of this is drashta this this drashta whatever mindsets we are in whatever emotional states we are in whatever thought process we are in whatever ideologies we have and they they can they might keep changing through different phases of our life when childhood we were thinking uh, our thought process was one way when we are uh, when we are young when we are in our teens 
our thought process is a different way but we, when we grow old our thought process changes and many things about us changes from our physicality to our mental states to our emotional states but that witness that sense of that that seer that sense of okay i this is when i say i am udai that sense of me that is constant just all of these has to be uh, thought about and personally anvaya or or personally applying that to oneself in life and seeing that is most important to understand this uh, so try to apply those apply these uh, texts on these sutras to oneself to yourself and and try to live them and and, and try to be in them so what will happen by bringing the cyclical activities of a ma- of the mind to a halt the true nature of the one who perceives as as me within the true nature of that one becomes established in one gets to know the meaning of it is written as it is then tada that one is established avasthanam in the true sense of the seer of the one who sees drashtuh swarupe the and the swarupa of drashta the fourth sutra says vritti sarupyam itaratra vritti sarupyam itaratra the word itaratra means elsewhere you have heard the word ekatra or anyat ekatra which means at one place anyatra which means elsewhere itaratra is otherwise at if not if these cyclical tendencies are not brought to a stop what happens otherwise is that's that seer the sense of that sense of me within is always identified or is always established in the vritti itself in one is caught up in that cyclical states that always keep functioning compulsively if it, they are not gained control over and they are not brought to a stop that sense of self within is always identified with not the true nature of itself but of the vritti itself of the activity of that state i hope it's all of this is clear so far the first four sutras yoga chitta vritti nirodha tada drashtu swarupe vasthanam vritti sarupyam itaratra the first one is atha yoga anushasanam of course and now the discipline of yoga clear all right perfect there are questions all right uh omananda i i know i'm guessing that is the name of uh you sir with seven apochas namaskaram is there a set poetic meter for chanting the yoga sutras as you might have noticed these are sutras not shlokas so there is no set chandas each sutra is a short sentence with no set rhythm or rhyme so you can chant it whichever way you want but it's it's good to have that flow of speech to it so it's chanted as vritti sarupyam itaratra you can as well have said it as vritti sarupyam itaratra but when you want to do it as a chant there is no rhyme or or melody but if it's if there is a flow to it it's nice but no chandas or poetic meter as you asked okay no no more questions pertaining to these four sutras let us move on to the next uh, set of sutras the next uh, how many next five sutra 5 to sutra 11 talk about this compulsive state so patanjali mentioned that otherwise you are identified with or, or, or with this compulsive states of chitta what are those states what is chitta what is that chitta and what does it do what what are those five states that chitta is constantly uh, stuck in that is mentioned in the next sutra vrittayah panchatayah klishta klishtah these vrittis that i talked about the Uh, that patanjali talked about uh, vrittaya panchataya pancha is five there are of five kinds these vrittis there can be either klishta or aklishta it's not always the case that these vrittis these compulsive states are complicated or or they cause suffering they need not always be klishta they need not all be always be complex and complicated and lead to suffering they can always also be pleasant states it's not that only the unpleasant state is the problem even the pleasant states are compulsive in childhood we have this i don't know you if you know this uh, uh, this saying 
that if you are happy for no reason and you're jo- very joyous and you're bubbling around on one day then the friends used to say oh if you're so happy then you'll you know immediately uh, hardships will come it's uh, it's it's said with and uh, with a very it, with a kind of a superstition but it has some basis behind it which is because you have unconsciously gone into such high states and pleasant states it is of course inevitable that you'll un- unconsciously get into such profound sorrows as well so both pleasant and unpleasantness can, is are are both compulsive and th- these vrittis are capable of being both klishta and aklishta and they are of five kinds these cyclical actions are of five kinds some complex and some simple some pleasant some unpleasant some some lead to joy some lead to misery but they are of five kinds we'll look at what those five kinds are the chant of this sutra is uh, vrittaya panchataya klishta klishta the entire chant is all already available last year for uh, international day of yoga i've uh, recorded the chant of patanjali yoga sutras if you want to listen to it together you can watch those videos or uh, people who are uh, with us on crowdcast if you click on that green button you'll be able to get the mp3 files as well the next sutra says those five that he mentioned the klishta klishta vrittaya those vrittis which are both complex and simple they are pramana viparyaya vikalpa nidra and smriti smritaya this smritaya is this yaha is only there because of sanskrit uh, uh, bahuvachana or the plural in which it is used but this is smriti so pramana is and uh, one other thing to keep in mind is all of these words are and their meanings as people in vakshudhi classes know the meanings of the word is in the sound itself but when we try to translate it into english a lot of context which is there in sanskrit the sanskrit word is lost for example this pramana it's translated roughly as judgment or discernment or knowing but the root for it this man or maapanam or this or it literally means measuring or to get a measure of uh not exactly in terms of the you know uh, the units of measure as centimeters meters but to get a me- to get a sense of what it is if you if we look at something and discern that oh, i and identify stuff that okay this is a pen this is a microphone and and we we and that's a tiger this is something this is good that is bad all, all of this discernment or getting a measure that aspect of the mind that uh, that action is also that is attributed to this chitta and one of these five activities pramana the second activity is viparyaya which is misjudgment it's chitta is not only capable of just knowing everything discerning everything it is also a, a capable of giving false information and, and it's it's not be, because it knows that it is false but it might sometimes give an impression of what is not exactly there that is viparyaya and that also is one of the co- continuous uh, cyclical activities of chitta so the first two are pramana judgment viparyaya misjudgment vikalpa imagination even if there is nothing to discern nothing to know vikalpa that that imagination is still possible with nothing so that vikalpa is another the third of the compulsive cyclical activities of chitta the fourth is nidra which is known to everybody which is sleep it, it that also is a compulsive cyclic activity of chitta if this is probably the most easiest to uh, identify and 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 know as as reality because you do not sleep for two days or three days then you you see the kind of hold and the sway it has on one's body so this chitta then even this nidra the state of nidra the activity of nidra is coming from this chitta and the last one is smriti which means remembering that which has already happened so and which which is not at all there right now as reality but chitta has this capability uh, is one of the activities of chitta is being able to recollect and bring it back into memory 
so these five activities uh yes viparya i am mistaking rope for a snake there are uh, there are many examples and as i said if we go deeper into each sutra and and keep expounding upon the nature of of these five activities we can stay here in this one sutra for the entire day but we'll try to keep it as concise and and short as possible but again uh, i hope that uh, these sketches give you that that sense of uh, uh, intuitive meaning uh but yes examples are given everywhere mistaking a rope for a snake mistaking a shadow for some something else uh mistaking one sound for the other basically discerning something but not getting that exact misjudging something is viparyaya there is vikalpa nidra and smriti pramana viparyaya vikalpa nidra smritaya these five are the pancha vrittaya of chitta and when those cyclical activities these five are stopped that is yoga is what patanjali said in the first sutra so far very clear and the 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 more evident it is the clearer it is the more intuitive it is the uh, the more the as as you read this sutra and you apply it in your own life and see that how how this applies what are these five states and you identify those five states happening continuously whenever you're doing as you talk as you breathe as you look at things around you as you sleep as you remember things as you imagine see that these are the activities that the mind is capable of that 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 part of chitta is capable of and these are happening all the time without your absolute control over them but that you are not doing them but they are being done on their own if you see that that is the point that is the that is success in learning yoga sutras and there we climb the you know stairs step by step by step of getting to higher and higher states of meditativeness um, all right now he just defined them uh, that these five are the uh, different vrittis now even among each of those vrittis he is going to patanjali is going to give us what what kind of action is being performed when we judge in pramana when we are discerning something what are the kind of activities that are happening how do we do that activity pratyaksha anumana agamaha pramanani pramanas are of three kinds pratyaksha that which is uh the literal meaning is akshi is eyes pratyaksha is that which is in front of our eyes but not it's not exactly doesn't always mean in front of our eyes as a physical object pratyaksha means direct experience that we that the one which you immediately know for example even tasting something and knowing that it has bitter or sweet is pratyaksha anubhuti it's need not be in front of your eyes but it's direct experience through sen- through sensory organs through basically uh yeah you can probably call it as sensory organs or something that you know directly anumana is inference anumana i guess this word is also used commonly in all uh, i i i'm guessing many indian languages in the same context but anumana is inference so pramana is directly knowing anumana is knowing something discerning something by by connecting the dots so that is anumana even that is judgment that is discernment and agama is acquisition agama the word literally means is gamana or gam uh, gam dhatu is in the uh, used in the context of movement or coming it's not your own experience but it has come from elsewhere in some in, uh, interpretations it is used it is interpreted as the knowledge given by scriptures or the knowledge given by gurus or the knowledge given by elders who 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 are, who are trustworthy but basically the knowledge that came from elsewhere for example if i tell something to you and it's not uh yet true in your experience but you uh you discern it you know it as pramana then that is agama pramana there is pratyaksha pramana anumana pramana and agama pramana so pramana is of three kinds as pratyak i'll re- chant it as slowly as possible try to follow it along and uh, if possible also chant it along with me pratyakshanumana gama pramanani the next one is uh, uh so 
uh, he uh, he uh, defined what these pr- uh, pramanas are he does the same uh, same thing for all the other five all the other four states as well he does it for all the five vrittis the next vritti which is viparyaya or misjudgment is defined as such vipari viparyaya mithya gnanam atad roopa pratishtham viparyaya or misjudgment is illusory or false knowledge which is rooted in the misidentification of truth you don't discern it exactly for what it is but rather have it have a skewed perspective identify something as something else entirely and this was this is one of the this is the second compulsive activity of chitta i guess this is very uh, intuitive and very obvious kind of a sutra uh, as uh, i don't know I, i'm sorry i forgot the name somebody mentioned yeah mistaking a rope for a snake or a shadow for uh, a demon or uh, the play of light as water all of these uh, mirage all of these are uh, viparyaya vikalpa the third compulsive cyclical state vikalpa is shabda gnana anupati vastu shunya shunya is the absence not being there so but what is there vikalpa is imagination right we understood vikalpa as imagination how does it happen it's a result of knowing something at the surface without a complete picture you had you do not have the entire thing there but you fill in the blanks you make it up on your own shabda gnana vastu shunya the the actual thing is not there but it's sound uh, it's uh, the knowledge of it some anupati is that which follows patanam is falling or or uh, yeah it's or following the word that which follows shabda gnana only one particular uh, not the complete idea not the uh, vas- vastu itself but only the knowledge of it that vritti which follows only half knowledge and then fills up the rest of it that capability of chitta is called as vikalpa or imagination it is chanted as shabda gnana anupati vastu shunyo vikalpa nidra nidra is defined here in the 10th sutra nidra is defined as abhava pratyaya alambana vritti it's a vritti of course it's a act cyclical activity what kind of a cyclical activity nidra or sleep is a cyclical activity of rest of alambana or support alambana literally means support which is supported by the state of non being so it's abhava pratyaya 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 is can be thought of uh, understood as an alternative or uh, the uh, the other state so all the uh, one uh, all of the other states are of one kind and in pratyaya in the other kind of state there is abhava there is non being it's not like you know that you you exist but uh, there is abhava or non being that is uh, the best it can be put i guess Uh, that kind that type of vritti or activity is called as nidra or sleep this is the fourth of the vrittis of the, of chitta have we chanted this yet abhava pratyaya lambana vrittir nidra one more thing that uh, the, these chants are helpful for is to know where to place emphasis and where to directly uh, where to not place emphasis and to of course identify mahapranas and alpapranas it's abhava it's not abhava it is abhava pratyaya alambana vrittir nidra here at this r rakara there is an extra emphasis it's not vrittir nidra it's it's kind of hard to not uh, chant it the right way so it's chanted as abhava pratyaya alambana vrittir nidra there is only one state left one state of one activity of chitta left now which is a smriti anubhuta vishaya asampramosha smriti it should have been capital m here but anyways anubhuta vishaya asampramosha anubhuta is that which has already been experienced vishaya is a subject or or 
that which has been experienced a sampramosha so not letting it pass not letting it go not letting it fade but then bringing it back just clinging on to it that is also one of the activities of chitta that is also one of the capabilities or the con- it's it's also a capability but the problem is it's com- happening compulsively and cyclically so that that is why that capability is uh, has to be put aside and stopped so that smriti or remembrance is retaining old experiences anubhuta vishaya without letting them pass asampramosha anubhuta vishaya asampramosha smriti i am guessing this completes yes 5 to 11 complete one uh, segment of yoga sutras we are we are now one fifth of our way com- through the first chapter of patanjali yoga sutras to give you a quick uh, recap of what we have learned in the first uh, 20% patanjali said now we are going to get the discipline self discipline of yoga and what that discipline means is to bring control or nirodha over the compulsive cyclical activities of chitta these activities are of five kinds some are complex some not uh, not some are uh, not, not meaning uh, complex and not so complex doesn't mean out of these five three are complex two are not all of these five are capable of being of being complex or being simple and straightforward uh they can then be uh, you know they can be klishta or aklishta what are those five pramana viparyaya vikalpa nidra smriti these five are the five compulsive cyclical tendencies activities but why should we do that because when we do that tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam only when those are put to a stop can one clearly see the nature of one's own self otherwise itaratra vritti sarupyam the it's the one self takes on the same form as those vrittis themselves the one is completely identified with those vrittis uh and we also saw what are the different kinds of each of those activities and the definitions of each of those vrittis so far perfect thanks clear dream no no dr- uh, okay dream um uh, so it can it can be so all these uh, activities can also happen in uh, in swapna the word for dream is swapna so in all this you you could be imagining in a dream you could so that is so if you look at all these right the terms the terminology used to de- uh, depict each of these are absolutely precise there are no mix ups so you need you should not confuse nidra as a dream nidra is just one of the states activities of chitta in nidra there is of course all of these activities that are happening uh, and uh, if there are no issues in streaming yes uh, if there is any issue you're facing lag it might be your data or internet connectivity issues or browser issues if you just refresh them you should uh, most of the times it should be taken care of all right uh, asam pramosha is not letting pr- so uh, so it's not letting them pass it's something has already been experienced but clinging on to it is some promotion is is letting it pass letting it uh, go and fade away a some promotion is not letting it go away but just clinging on to it that is smriti or remembrance not living in the moment but then but in the past itself not moving on from the past all right now from the 12th uh, sutra onwards until uh, until the 16th sutra the next uh, 12 13 14 the next five sutras are the means of control so he said these are the five this is how the five activities of chitta are and you have to control them you have to bring mastery over them and you should be able to stop them bring them to a complete standstill how should we uh, can we get the, bring them to a standstill through abhyasa and vairagya this bhyam is a uh, dvivachana prayoga it's this bhyam is there because it's dual there are two things abhyasa and vairagya tan nirodha tat is that nirodha is stopped through what is stopped those all these activities that we have mentioned so far can be stopped can be brought to a standstill nirodha 
through abhyasa which literally means practice and vairagya which means disidentification raga is kala the literal meaning of raga is rang or all of this is coming from this the word is kala when vairagya is not leaving everything not you know not being disinterested in everything but rather disentangled from things it's not that so vairagya what it means is it doesn't mean you cannot take up any color it means that you can take up any color but not be just stuck to it so it's vai vai meaning beyond raga so you are you are almost you are transparent so it doesn't mean you are incapable of being attached it's it just means that you can you can be involved in anything that you want to but not be caught by it that is vairagya we we'll look at more of these definitions of patanjali goes on to describe what abhyasa is and what vairagya is in further detail but the these activities are brought to a standstill through abhyasa and vairagya that is mentioned in the 12th sutra abhyasa vairagya abhyantan nirodha in the next sutra in the 13th sutra he defines what abhyasa is what is practice practice it's as simply defined doesn't you know he doesn't say is practice uh, you know hatha yoga or kriya yoga or karma yoga or not, not all that it says tatra sthitau yatna in that the yatna or the effort yatna prayatna you know this word the effort the 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 uh, activity effort not meaning a uh, inter- like a tiring effort but the just the practice the act of being in that in that tatra we we saw this tatra before itaratra is elsewhere tatra is there atra is here tatra is there tatra and wo- there meaning where in that state of control itself being in that state of control bringing that control over all these aspects of chitta continuously putting in an effort to be in that controlled state is abhyasa it might seem like a tautology which uh, which says uh, <laughs> the only way to get there is to get there this kind of sentence but it's very profound in its own sense in, in that it's not uh, abhyasa is not doing one particular thing no no it's not uh, it's not just pranayama or it's not just dhyana it's not just one practice but abhyasa is just defined as an effort to continuously stay in that state of control tatra sthitau yatno bhyasa uh, one i would love to get one feedback am i being too detailed or not detailed enough that is something i want to know because uh, because there, there are many ways to approach it one can just talk about one particular sutra for hours as i said before and at the same time i could just chant it and then read the meaning and move on but i hope there is a this, this is a reasonable uh, midway point between both these extremes but if there is uh, perfect okay perfect thank you but if you have any doubt somewhere le- let me know and i can uh, stay there for some more time but sutras which are simple enough we'll uh, move ahead for sutras like this which are quite uh, thank you thank you for the confirmation guys precisely detailed somebody says perfect all right thank you next uh, sutra is talks about that abhyasa itself what should be the nature of that abhyasa sa to that saha is that uh, one of the forms of that to that is dirgha kala is dirgha kala is a long time dirgha kala kala it's, it's a simple enough word nairantarya antarya meaning gap antaraya or antara is a gap is taking up nairan ni, the, before that there is nihi nairantarya meaning no gap it's uninterrupted satkara is well done karya karana krudhatu doing something how how is it done satka with it's done well how is it asevitah is performed satkara is it's well performed how is it performed nairantarya it's uninterruptedly performed and dirghakala it's 
performed for a long time when that abhyasa is done with dirgha kala nairantarya and with satkara then it becomes drudha bhumi drudha is firm or stable bhumi is a platform or or basically bhumi is ground it becomes firm you are established on firm ground in that practice when you do it for a long time without any breaks and with a sense of reverence with doing performing the activity well basically so the what this says is it is strengthened drudha bhumi it becomes by prolonged dirgha kala uninterrupted nairantarya and well performed satkara performed is asevita application of action application of the, that practice we have looked at the practice as uh, abhyasa and vairagya sorry uh, yeah uh, sorry we looked at there are that there are two ways of uh, bringing that nirodha one is abhyasa and the other is vairagya so is abhyasa absolutely necessary to bring that control not really you can be in vairagya and not do any of this practice this abhyasa and still have nirodha but if is vairagya absolutely necessary uh if, but they are mutually complementary you do one thing the other naturally comes ac- along so if you are established in abhyasa vairagya develops and vaira being in that constant state of vairagya itself is abhyasa so uh this sutra here describes when will that abhyasa be firm when will it be fruitful when it is done dirgha kala nairantarya and satkara se with satkara this way we, it is chanted is uh, satu dirgha kala nairantarya satkara sevito dridha bhumi this uh, this is a dha and this is bha both of these are uh, mahaprana sounds which means they have to be uttered with that exp- explosion in the mouth that it has to be uttered with a lot of prana that is the literal meaning of mahaprana sounds so it is drudha bhumi the next sutra is drish uh, it defines what vairagyam is uh this is one of the states that one can easily get de- deluded in that yes yes i i do not have desire or i'm i'm not uh, you know i'm not i do not covet anything but the actual definition that patanjali gives this the systematic definition of vairagya or being beyond raga or disidentification or or not being entangled vairagya is drushta anushravika vishaya vitrishnasya vashikara sanya sanya is sanya you uh, sanya sarvanam you might have uh, heard in uh, grammar sanya is the name literally means the, that that is known by the name of what is uh, known what is known by the name of that vashikara vashikara is keeping it under one's uh, control of what what are these things that are kept under control Oh, the thirst trishna you have you might have heard the word mruga trishna so the word trishna literally means thirst thirst for what drishta anushravika vishaya vishaya literally means the objects of the senses sorry objects of the senses of which have been either been perceived drishta or anushravika which have been heard about not just uh objects of the senses for example you you know this taste you you have developed a craving for 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 something that you already experienced or what can be craving for towards craving can be something towards to a craving can be towards something that has already been experienced or something that we covet or one we uh, we heard that it's great if that experience is there so these two things the these two things can be craved for there can be a thirst or trishna for either that which has been directly experienced drishta or just has been heard about anushravika so having control over and and, and being in uh, having control or vashikara being in uh, control over ob- objects of senses vishaya 
which are either already experienced in the past drishta or just have been heard about anushravika that state is vairagyam do you see how over overarching these definitions are it's not vashi vairagyam is he doesn't just say uh you know not just uh it's it's absence of desire it's not it's not that there is desire because desire is the basis of anybody who lives but having control over the craving of that which has both that which has been heard or that which has been experienced in the past is vairagya so it's vairagya it's this rudimentary definitions of lack of desire is they they do not cover all possible ground but here this sutra is in itself complete and encompasses all possibilities it is not too specific it's not too specific and uh, and cover, uh, does not leave out any other uh, possibilities it encompasses all possible aspects of what vairagya the opposite of vairagya can mean and excludes all that possibilities so drishta anushravika vishaya vitrishnasya vashikara sanya vairagyam uh again i hope the sketch gives you that in um, that interpretation and you can you of course you can interpret it and understand it and do that anvaya for yourself of how it is in your own life what what is what do you crave what do you not crave what what is it that you crave for that which you have already experienced what is that what is it that you crave for which is not which you only heard about and do you have control over the desire over the thirst to experience those things all of these one has to again uh, do that self study and apply it to one's own self it is chanted as drishtanushravika vishaya vitrishnasya vashikara sanya vairagyam the next sutra also talks about vairagya itself what is that state of vairagya tat that is param that is the state of the beyond purusha khyate khyati or sankhya this the word khyati literally means it can it's used in the, in the sense of renown or fame khyati but kya, sankhya also that khya literally means to know just to know the truth of know what purusha khyati purusha again doesn't mean man or male purusha is the one pur, it comes from the same root as purogati that which drives us forward from within is purusha that self within that animates us is purusha P- by knowing that sense of that self guna vaitrishnam even the gunas the there are attributes that we have the qualities um the sattva rajas and tamo gunas vaitrishnam is why we we had seen the sound why which is literally means beyond where have we seen why in vairagyam itself there is why vai trishnyam is going beyond that trishna or thirst so it is the sutra is uh, is interpreted as it is a state of the beyond tat param born out of the true knowledge of the self purusha khyate when one is beyond the thirst of even the gunas themselves the gunas which are inherent qualities within us not just cravings of that which has been heard and that which has been experienced in the past but the cravings that are inherent that that uh, are created that are born out of the gunas themselves which are prim- primal primordial qualities of existence the desires that are born out of even them are uh, one is beyond even the thirst of gunas themselves so that is uh, vairagya it is this sutra is chanted as tat param purusha khyate guna vai trishnyam so these complete the next segment we have 16 completed 16 sutras of patanjali yoga sutras so so far the first four sutras we have seen it what is yoga and why should we attempt to get into the state of yoga the next 5 to 11 we talked about the five compulsive states of chitta what they are and their definitions and then from sutra 12 to 16 patanjali talked about 
the various means the, both the means of control bringing uh, those uh, uh, cyclical activities of the of chitta under control what are the various means of them what are the different forms of abhyasa and vairagya and what do they mean now we get into the state into the definitions of samadhi itself so we have seen what yoga is how, how to do it uh, what are the various means of getting there and now from now on we patanjali talks about deeper and deeper states of meditativeness in my experience it's not necessary that one has to go through each of them in that particular order we are going to look at various kinds of samadhi called samadhi called sampragnyata asampragnyata sabija nirbija savitarka nirvitarka all these kinds of samadhi it's not necessary that one has to progress sequentially through them the practices and based on the guru who initiates you into these practices you might either go through them step by step or there might be some powerful practices which directly get you into which which absolutely bring those activities to a st- stand still and throw you headlong into the into some of the mo- deepest states of meditativeness without you having to go through the uh without you having to climb the stairs yourself but patanjali defines step by step he doesn't immediately go into that absolute state of samadhi where uh, all of these activities are brought to an absolute standstill but when abhyasa and vairagya are on when that practice of cessation of activities is on what is the sequence what is the step by step sequence in which one slowly gets into deeper and deeper states of samadhi and what are the terms for different levels of those of of meditativeness so that one can one passes through now the first of those meditative states is sampragnyata samadhi this sutra defines what sampragnyata samadhi is it defines it as vitarka vichara ananda asmita rupanugamat sampragnyata Sa- sampragnyata samadhi which is equanimous or the that state of samadhi we'll look at what sampragnyata is uh, in in a few moments that sampragnyata samadhi is a state which is a consequence anugama which follows anugama anu we saw that anu is something that is after gamanam is going so anugama is some is a state which is a consequence which follows vitarka you can get into sampragnyata samadhi by vitarka spiritual reasoning tarka you can reason you can bring about what kind of reasoning is that it can be any kind sort of reasoning it, the the path the door of reasoning that opens up this kind of sampragnyata samadhi is not only only one kind of questioning if you reason enough you see you look at how life functions around you if you bring about that reasoning and and you analyze the functioning of the world you can clearly see how it functions and see that that is what we have been doing so far right we have been looking at it very analytically and reason how how patanjali has laid this out and how it applies for us so that is vitarka and vichara is deep thought vichara this is a very simple word you contemplate upon that reasoning that you have made that okay now that i have thought about these things and i have analyzed these things and i did tarka on these things and now you do vichara on those things and that vichara leads you to sampragnyata samadhi and ananda ananda is pure is a state is there is sukha which is just pleasantness is a happy state of being and there is ananda which is uh, these words some of these words do not really have are, there's no way there are english uh, unfortunately there are no english uh, uh, equivalents for these words so ananda is that pure state of bliss and asmita is knowing the sense asmi asmi is a word in sanskrit itself uh, pra- patanjali pranjali ranatosmi in the very first shloka we saw asmi is asmita is that sense of i so by all of these how many methods are there by vitarka vichara ananda and asmita by all of these by asmita rupa anu anugamat sampragnyata that first state of equanimity of the first state of calming down of these activities can be brought about so through this 
that is why it is called as gnana sampragnata pragnata so sam and pragnata it is brought about through this through a through uh, some literally means well good uh, equanimous some can be for now we'll look at it as good by good application of gnanam or knowledge through what spiritual reasoning vitarka vichara ananda and asmita all of this the first state that this all of these take us towards is sampragnata samadhi virama pratyaya abhyasa purva sanskara shesha anya so we we saw that there is uh, sampragnata samadhi is so that is one level of samadhi what is the other if there is this one stage then there should be something else which is complementary to it that anya anya means the other the other state asampragnata samadhi it's not uh, it's not explicitly mentioned by the name asampragnata that is the point of sutras they are as uh, crisp and as concise and use as little vocabulary as possible so he doesn't say asampragnata samadhi he doesn't want to use even that that much <laughs> that amount of syllables he just says anya the other state um the equanimous mind beyond discernment so all the other all the thought all the uh factors that were leading to sampragnata samadhi before had that discernment or gnana but the state that is beyond that is a consequence of sanskara she- is a consequence of continuous practice of giving rest to mental activity where one sanskaras or latent tendencies only those remain so sans shesha literally means that which is left over this is used in mathematics also the word word shesha so uh, that which is left over what is left over sanskara shesha only the sanskaras or the, in, the the deepest tendencies are left over so these deepest tendencies that one that have been brought about as as one's nature one's inherent nature only those are left but one's conscious discernment of all this reasoning and and and, uh, and thought and all of this when all of them come to a complete standstill by what virama virama meaning rest bringing them to rest abhyasa purva how did they come to a rest because before they came to a rest what was involved was abhyasa abhyasa purva it was preceded purva by abhyasa virama pratyaya is pratyaya as we saw before can be just thought of as the other state the alternative is pratyaya so the alternative state which was preceded or which followed abhyasa where one's mental activity is uh, came to a rest virama pratyaya or the other state of virama or absolute rest of all the uh, activities where only sanskara is shesha only one's latent inherent tendencies the most the just the personality is left but the thought process is all gone uh, not gone as in it's lost forever but it's not compulsive anymore that is asampragnata samadhi which is one level deeper to sampragnata samadhi how is that samp- asampragnata samadhi brought about for those who are videha for those who are who have left their body there is no more uh, the, you know uh, there is nothing that they can consciously do to get their no abhyasa for them for videha for those who do not have their body so this not just uh, concerns about those who are in their bodies those who are embodied but even after one leaves their body uh, patanjali does not discriminate between all of those beings because even they are in compulsive states uh, so for those who are videha and for those who are prakriti laya videha prakriti layanam for those these two kinds of beings the beings who have lost their bodies without their bodies and prakriti laya and those who are immersed in their own nature in their own sense of self for these two kinds of beings bhava pratyaya 
this asampragnata samadhi is brought about through uh, this state is caused just by just bhava bhu sattayam the sound bhu bhavati bhavani uh, sambhavaha uh, all this bhava literally means being just being so all these disembodied beings and those who are just immersed in their own uh, state of self this asampragnata samadhi is brought about not by abhyas or any other effort but just by the state of but just as a natural consequence of just being itaresham for others meaning those of us who are listening to this talk of course itaresham those who have not lost their bodies and those who are not just sitting in in bliss in immersed in, in their own selves how is that caused shraddha virya smriti samadhi pragnya purvaka purvaka again it is preceded by which means it what does it mean when it says purvaka it means it is before this happened this was there it preceded that which means this state follows uh follows what uh shraddha steadfast focus that again comes from dhi which means one is absolutely focused one is uh, keen and immersed one has, has once dhi is immersed in that that is shraddha steadfast focus virya with immense energy smriti constant remembrance and samadhi equanimity samadhi equanimity and pragnya perception gnya is gnanam uh, gnyapti all this gnya is knowing pragnya is uh, an exalted state of knowing uh, vara is best pravara is even better so pragnya is that pure sense of perception so this for all the others which means for all the others who have who still have their bodies and who, who are not yet in the state of just being immersed in prakriti laya for those who are not videha and prakriti laya that is what itaresha means for all of those that asam pragnata samadhi that deeper state of meditativeness is brought about by steadfast focus with intense and by rising up their energies to a higher pitch through a constant remembrance what what to remember that we'll look at in so after this pada the second pada of uh, yoga sutras is called as sadhana pada which talks even more about sadhana there all these concepts become even clear through constant remembrance by in, by employing that aspect of chitta and uh, through constant practice of samadhi and pragnya through pure perception of course all of this means is necessary is necessary because the body is still there and we are not yet immersed in the sense of self so all of these activities are needed and they are they are they occur before asampragnata samadhi for those who are not videha and prakriti laya so asampragnata samadhi in those who are not videha and prakriti laya those who are embodied and not immersed in their own sense of self is brought about through the effort through constant effort of all these uh things through shraddha virya smriti samadhi pragnya purvaka itaresham i think uh, we have no even the next two are in the same okay segment tivra samveganam asanna very very intuitive tivra means intense or extreme samvega is effort or or the one who approach it with the, with with uh, with that state with that resoluteness so with asanna it's near it's easily attainable simple the, sim, the uh, it, it's because uh, the in the previous uh, sutra it might feel a little daunting that oh for those who are have not lost their bodies and for people who are not yet there there so many other things are needed before one gets into asampragnata samadhi patanjali says not so for those who are really intense it's asana or tivra samvega it is very simple ti tivra samvegana ma sanna i hope you are also following uh, the sketches below so they, they kind of act as uh, guides to 
interpret the sutra simpler sutras easily for yourself then even in that uh, approach in that resolute approach there are different kinds of resolute approach there is mrudu madhya and adhimatratva tatah api visheshah even here this resolve the it, it's defined in three different it can be categorized into people who are uh, you know mild mildly approaching that that asampragnata samadhi or those who have middling effort who are okay like they are <laughs> uh so basically is just categorizing the efforts of people he says he wants people to be intense about their sadhana uh, and they, you you know for yourself how how intense you are with your sadhana how is it is it lax or is it you, you do it occasionally on on full moon or new moon days or you know special occasions or is it really intense that every single day or or every single breath you in you you just are there in that effort of uh shraddha virya smriti uh, samadhi pragnya so uh, how are those efforts being put they fall under three categories roughly some are mild some are uh, medium and some are intense is what he says so until now we looked at th- these states of meditativeness the states of samadhi which are sampragnata and asampragnata samadhi in sampragnata that it is it is the first level of getting becoming meditative where you employ your reasoning and your thought and you uh, and you uh, uh, and, and you try to be blissful ananda and uh, you try to get into an equanimous state of mind where you do not where the hold of those compulsive cyclical activities slackens slightly that is sampragnata and for asampragnata where those that thought process and that reasoning is all not necessary and it's beyond those states shraddha virya smriti samadhi all these are needed and pragna these are needed for asampragnata and it's of different kinds now in the next okay <laughs> I, i okay i'm i'm guessing it's all uh, clear so far because uh, some people are saying thanks some people are saying he didn't say it should be intense just noted the categories yeah <laughs> he just matter of factly casually said yeah there are different kinds of people for those who are intense it comes easily it it looks at how again right it, for somebody who is who is intense and who he, who reads this it is almost a commandment that oh my god i should now and now that i have this information with me i should be in the tivra category some people might not really feel that necessary but yes as uh, as cb rao ji said uh, he patanjali is just noting these down as because these are facts of life it's he's not imposing anything he's just noting making observations um and now he says there is one more way of uh sorry one second there is one more way of getting into this deeper states of meditativeness which is through ishvara pranidhana va is also or va literally means or you can do all of these before shraddha virya smriti samadhi pragna all that and be tivra samvega or, 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 do, or do all of that or you can simply abide you can simply be in the in ishvara this probably is one only is the only sentence which talks about devotion because patanjali is an analytical person he is a he is a scientist more he is a scientist sage so this place this one sutra is the only sutra probably where devotion or bhakti is is mentioned it uh, even there not as some kind of a you know sweet state of emotion beyond logic even here he just says you can either do that or you can abide pranidhana you can be you can meditate and you can just immerse in ishvara and he goes on to just even give a technical description to what ishvara is what god is what uh, so what does ishvara mean klesha karma vipaka aashayaihi aparamrishtah purusha vishesha 
Ishwara. Who is Ishwara? So uh, you, you can pl- uh, please also pay enough attention to the uh, to the sketches, guys. So I, I'm sure they will give you. Uh, I mean, I'm sure they'll give you better insight. Uh, there is the saying, right? A picture is worth a thousand words. So I'm sure after all this, uh, after uh, you know me uh, shouting horse, the images can do a better job of conveying that sense intuitively rather than all this <laughs> word circus that I'm doing. So please pay attention to the images. Is what I wanted to say. Ishvara pran, Ishvara pranidhana dva, or it can also be attained through pranidhana abiding in ishvara who is that ishvara klesha karma vipaka ashayaihi aparam rishtah purusha vishesha ishvara vishesha is that distinguished sense of purusha of self ishvara is not somewhere out up there or you know in temple or in, in one particular city or in, in heaven ishvara is that distinguished sense of self that exalted sense of self vishesha purusha vishesha that which is which dwells within which is beyond aparamrishta aparamrishta is one who is beyond and apara and am amrishta is who is not touched who is not sullied by what by klesha afflictions karma actions vipaka the results of those actions and ashaya the intent to perform any action so this sense of self that dwells within which is generally you know which uh, which is generally uh, sullied or which is generally smeared by these intentions that the self within has has intentions has desires has that desire to perform action then expectation of that action of the for results of that action goes through sufferings of ups and downs and all this turbulence but the sense of self the distinguished sense of self which is beyond and untouched by all of these hindrances is ishvara i i'd uh, rather leave it here and not give more interpretations on and uh, but this is this can be a touchy topic but uh, try to uh, again make internalize it and uh, and and see it as 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 truth both in terms of gurus that you follow or or deities that you worship or for rama and krishna and all the other personalities uh, that that you look up to see how this definition applies to all of them so yeah tatra niratishayam sarvagnya bijam tatra is again there niratishayam sarvagnya bijam in that ishvara is contained the seed bija of all knowledge sarvagnya just look at the sketch in that sense of self where is it within you who is it ishvara when is it ishvara when is it when it is when that self within is untouched and kept aside from klesha karma vipaka and ashaya and there itself is the seed of all knowledge so whatever there is to know as knowledge about life maybe not uh, you know uh, everything that is an outpouring i don't know uh again i am not a master of yoga so i would i don't want to claim that i have all these within myself i, I do not but fortunately there have been glimpses where these kinds of where you want to understand something when you want to crack open one 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 uh field of knowledge you see you just uh, think over it you not not exactly think but you just calm yourself to that state of meditativeness and that that meaning and and that knowledge dawns upon you why because it's all contained within that sense of pure form of self called as ishvara so tatra tatra niratishayam sarvagnya bijam i loved this uh, sketch especially because it it's that that seed within or contains all knowledge in itself 
and it also depicts womb in a in a in a in a certain way um so yeah yeah appreciate all the uh, sketches for for the beauty that they have and the simplicity and the and the profoundness that they have um all right the next sutra is sa purvesham api guru kalena anavachedat because of the circular because of the unbreaking uninterrupted an avachhed cheda is splitting chidra cheda chedan shirachedan uh, ched cheda is breaking an avachheda is not being in, not having that property of being able to cut as uh, not being able to split as having a beginning and an end if you can split something there is a beginning and an end but because of the continuous nature because of the cyclical nature of time ka of of anavachhedat of what of kala kalena anavachhedat because of that unending or unsplitable nature of time which is a continuous cyclical process kala chakra that ishvara sa which ishvara the ishvara that dwells within purvesham api guru that ishvara is the is the guru is the illuminate okay wonderful the same word is the one who gave this knowledge is the one who illuminated all those who came before there are hundreds and thousands of of great masters who have known their own self who have come before purva purvesham who taught this knowledge to all of them who where did this originate from from ishvara because this knowledge is all within that ishvara in a seed form where is that ishvara it is within this it is the purusha vishesha it is the self it is the exalted state of self that dwells before dwells within and that ishvara that dwells within is also the guru or the illuminator gu meaning darkness gukara andhakarasyat rukara tan nirodhaka so gu is the darkness guha is a cave because the sound gu itself represents darkness and ru is represents light that splits away that cuts through darkness so the one who gave this knowledge to the ones who came before to the where did this knowledge all this knowledge originate from it is from that person alone saha which who is that saha ishvara i hope uh, these i'm i'm again repeating myself these are not this is not that kind of knowledge which you know for once and then you when and then you uh, are done with it these are sutras that you keep pondering over again and again and until that state as to uh, until you become the state of ishvara tasya vachaka pranava vachaka is known by the name of the vachaka is what is the name of somebody it's known by the name of tasya is of him of that pranavah that ishvara is known by the name of pranava so that is the definition of pranava the definition of pranava is that we have seen before that it is it's the name given to ishvara who is the source of who is who has the seed of all knowledge within who is beyond klesha karma vipaka and ashaya who is the purusha vishesha and the descriptor of that ishvara vachaka is the descriptor the name or the known by the name of pranava or the primordial sound which is a combination of a so the one thing to understand here is generally it is said this pranava is a combination of a u and ma no a u and ma are are the components of pranava so it's, it's it's almost like cause and effect it's not that we get pranava when we mix a u and ma that is pranava and that there are three components to that that is the primordial sound and from there comes these three sounds i hope that cause and uh, effect uh, what the the causation or the <laughs> the chronology of that is clear it is not that these three sounds form mixed together to form pranava the pranava has these three components 
of a u and m which are these three let the, it's known by the name of tasya vachaka pranava the name of the descriptor of that ishvara is pranava tad japas tadartha bhavanam one has to and artha or artha literally means i mean it's used in the sense of meaning but it literally means essence uh and artha bhavanam tad japa that pranava is and which is the name which is the descriptor of ishvara which is the self again which is an exalted sense of self within that has to be constantly contemplated upon and that has to be meditated upon chanted and that is the practice I, this is a, a very simple tajjapastadartha bhavanam i i i guess i may missed chanting a couple of uh, sutras before but you can as i said find the entire chant by each pada and also the entire complete uninterrupted chant on youtube already and this is the last sutra of this particular segment tatah pratyakchetana adhigamah api antaraya abhavascha i guess this is a little complicated kind of a sutra tatah and from that from what from the japa and artha bhavana of pranava which is a descriptor of ishvara all that all that uh, yada 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 before all you know uh, from sutra 22 until 29 all these meanings are are cascading one one after the other so in order to understand 29 you refer to tatah so from where from the artha and uh, japa of pranava what is that pranava vachaka of of whom of ishvara who is sarvagnya bijam where who contains the sarvagnya bijam what is the nature of that ishvara klesha karma vipaka shera paramrishta purusha vishesha why is why are we even talking about ishvara because pranidhana in ishvara is one other way of getting into asampragnata samadhi is that the only way not necessary there are all other methods that we saw before shraddha virya smriti samadhi pragnya and if you don't have body or if you don't have if you are immersed in your own self just bhava pratyaya and all that before so the meanings are cascading one after the other um here we have finally come to a place where what happens when you uh, do the artha and artha bhavana and japa of pranava tatah pratyak chetana adhigamah is one single word adhigama is one second pratyak chetana adhig adhigamah is one word chetana is consciousness chaitanya chetana nol pratyak is individual adhigama is obtaining or or gaining what do you gain adhigama prat of you gain the pratyak chetana or the knowledge of individual consciousness these are the, these words can just mean can remain at the level of words but what i would rather impart is an experience of these words so by constant meditation and constant contemplation over the essence of pranava or the primordial sound arises the knowledge of individual consciousness and also antaraya abhava antaraya means obstacles we'll see what obstacles are in the next few sutras abhava is lack we saw abhava before once uh where did we maybe we did not exactly see abhava we saw bhava pratyaya same bhava is being abhava is not being not being of what antarayas antarayas or obstacles when do you not have uh, obstacles or antarayas tatah tatah is from the meditation and from the contemplation of meaning of what of pranava tatah pratyakchetana adhigamo pyantaraya bhavascha so from the meditation upon pranava you gain the knowledge of individual consciousness and also remove and and dissolve any obstacles until here is one segment all right any questions 
यस यस पूजा जी अभाव प्रत्ययालंबना वृत्तिर निद्रा सो यस दैट स्टेट ऑफ नॉन बीइंग हियर द ऑब्स्टेकल्स गेट इनटू अ स्टेट ऑफ नॉन बीइंग व्हिच मींस ऑब्स्टेकल्स आर रिमूव्ड दैट्स एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट या थैंक यू सो मच फॉर रिमाइंडिंग मी ऑलराइट वी कैन गेट इनटू द द नेक्स्ट ग्रुप ऑफ सूत्रस आर फ्रॉम 30 to 39 so these let's let's look at them one by one he said uh, patanjali said with the japa of uh, pranava what happens pratyakche chetana adhigamah and antaraya abhavah what are these antarayas what are these obstacles that get removed by the japa of pranava vyadhi disease sthyana procrastination samshaya doubt or hesitation pramada negligence alasya laziness avirati failure to not cling it means just coveting all the time not being able to not covet if that makes sense failure to not cling is avirati there's a double negative there i hope it's a virati so not being able to give a pause. if you start eating chips not being able to put it down basically <laughs> so you find these examples everywhere and you have to constantly uh, ponder over what the meaning of it is how it is apply, applicable in one's own life avirati failure to not cling or put down your mobile phone also for example भ्रांति दर्शन हेलोजिनेशन अलब्ध भूमिकत्व इनेबिलिटी टू ग्रेन गेन ग्राउंडिंग टू बी नॉट बी इनेबिलिटी टू बी फर्म इन आफ्टर अचीविंग वन पर्टिकुलर स्टेट ऑफ मेडिटेटिवनेस द इनेबिलिटी टू जस्ट स्टे इन दैट स्टेट ऑफ मेडिटे स्टेट ऑफ बींग बट राधर फॉलोइंग बैक डाउन अगैन इज अलब्ध भूमिकत्व यू यू गॉट समथिंग यू गॉट योर सर्टन स्टेज but it was not it it went out, slipped out of your hands and anavasthitatva unsteadiness that it's your always you know wavering in your pursuits so all of these are chitta vikshepa they are vikshepa vikshepa literally means breakage or scattering kshepa is kshipani kshipani is being a rocket kshipati is one who the, the act of throwing is kshepanam chitta vikshepa or or scattering of chitta so when chitta is not one pointed and focused and the abhyasa is not proper then there are these antarayas or obstacles which come about what are these obstacles the ones that we have seen so far vyadhi sthyana samshaya pramada alasya avirati bhranti darshana alabdha bhumikatva anavasthitatva i don't want to go deeper into each and every one of these obstacles i'm sure all of us have some or the other kind have faced and relate with one or the other obstacle that is present here if not all of them i hope nobody is nobody is facing all of them together but at different stages of life there is different uh, i'm sure uh, all of us have faced alasya and pramada and samshaya and uh, avirati for sure and probably <laughs> all of them have been faced but these obstacles become abhava uh, through japa and artha bhavana of pranava and this sutra talks about uh, so there are these obstacles what what if there are obstacles what is born out of those obstacles is saha bhuvah what is born along with those obstacles through that scattering of chitta vikshepa saha bhuvah when the chitta is scattered what is the resultant cause of it dukha suffering daur manasya manas becomes du which means depression literally i mean it can be interpreted as depression where uh, the it's the manas gets down rod and it it feels low anga mejayatva anga is uh, the limbs and losing control over the limbs is anga mejayatva and shwasa prashwasa labored breathing and and you know just not the breath not being easy and and uh, 
and relax and soft and smooth you you notice this that when you do pranayama when you when you do this abhyasa the one thing that is immediately noticeable is how soft and silky the breath becomes it just the process of breathing becomes so easy and so pleasurable so and the opposite of it when the mind is scattered these are the symptoms that are shown if that should not happen if all of those have to the uh, obstacles have to go away if the symptoms have to go away, these are the symptoms right these are the results of what of a weak of a scattered chitta if these symptoms have to go away you have to treat the root cause the root cause being antarayas the antarayas uh if they have to go away abhava if abhava has to happen for antarayas tad japas tad artha bhavanam you uh you contemplate upon the essence and you chant the pranava sound tat pratishedhartham ek tatva abhyasah exactly what i mentioned just now i jumped ahead a little the only way to overcome these tat do is that pratishedhartham in order to overcome those in order to nishedha is similar uh, similar word is pratishedha nishedha is a ban a pratishedha is to keep them away to uh, keep them aside eka tatva abhyasah there is you have to do abhyasa or practice of eka tatva is through one focused and no you should not deviate and scatter and waver along your path but ek with that eka tatva abhyasa these vikshepa sahabhuva these uh, symptoms that are born along with uh, uh, with these antarayas are kept aside now so far he has talked about uh, the negative a- effects of these things but now the unpleasantness has been taken care of the if uh, now what are what are the pleasant things that will happen to chitta chitta prasadanam so chitta prasadanam is pleasantness prasada is a pleasant state of being of chitta comes about through maitri is friendliness karuna compassion mudita joy upeksha neutrality towards the subjects of sukha pleasantness and dukha unpleasantness punya virtue and apunya vice so there might be all of these uh, what is this contradictions no what all of these uh, dualities which one might face there are ups and downs and upheavals and and pleasantnesses but upeksha but maitri karuna mudita upekshanam uh, through friendliness through compassion through joy through being in a state of joy and through equanimity through staying neutral this is again said in all texts of yoga in bhagavad gita which is the most beautiful and uh, and the most playful text on and the very instructive text on yoga not as technical as as this yoga sutra probably but even there the same thing is being is talked about that you stay in that upeksha which is neutrality towards sukha and dukha papa and punya and uh, you know uh, between things that that seem uh, uh, to bring you uh, pleasure and pain you stay neutral uh so that uh state that that kind of uh being leads to chitta prasadanam to a pleasant state of chitta you are not agitated anymore chitta is not uh is not f- fluttering and and fluctuating and getting agitated anymore by being in these states the other uh, okay we'll we'll look at the other uh atyaya the other option is being in antarayas and their vikshe vikshepa sahabhuvas and these two are mutually complementary uh, mutually yeah complementary that either you can be in the, this state of chitta prasadanam or in that chitta vikshepa now he says pracchardana vidharana abhyam va pranasya chitta prasadanam or the pleasantness of chitta 
can be brought through all those maitri karuna mudita upeksha sukha dukha punya punya upeksha and all that or through prachardana and vidharana of prana through controlled inhalation and exhalation of one's prana or life breath prana is not exactly air but life breath itself you there is a specific way you hold it and then you release it and you inhale take it in and then you stay in all these uh, puraka kumbhaka recha kanshunyaka different uh, stages of controlling the inflow and the outflow of air within your system by doing this in a controlled way chitta prasadanam happens the next sutra says vishaya vativa pravritti pravritti rutpanna manasah sthiti nibandhini uh one second no yeah sorry so the next sutra says vishaya vativa pravritti utpanna i'm so sorry guys one second this all right the 35th sutra says vishaya vativa pravritti rutpanna manasah sthiti nibandhini the meaning of which is or the states of mind manasah sthiti the states of the here manasah sthiti is the states of the mind which we were talking about so far nibandhini are also steadied by the sensations caused by one's own intrinsic nature it's not necessary that one has to do all of this in inherently one can be calm even that possibility is covered uh pravritti through pravritti itself through one's own intrinsic nature uh through one's own intrinsic nature vishayavati even if the chitta even if the even if the mind is involved in all of these vishayas or this Uh, sukha and dukha and punya and uh, all all of that once by one's own pravritti by one's intrinsic nature the chitta can be kept pleasant so it's not necessary that in order to keep your chitta pleasant you have to continuously or constantly be in that state of uh, you know um, prachad prachardana and vidharana of prana or uh, you have to do maitri karuna mudita and upeksha all that just it can become intrinsic nature through practice the sketch again depicts it very well vishokava jyotishmati or by a bright state of mind which is free of sorrow jyotishmati is a bright state of mind when when your mind is in such a such a light uh, such an enlightened state which is free from sorrow even then the mind is steadied simpler very obvious kind of sutras Uh, of course they can be delved into even in a in a much more detailed way but i think for our pursuits this this is quite uh, simple enough that we are talking about keeping the chitta free from any sort of fluctuations and and upheavals how it is done is being listed out firstly he covered all the all the difficult and and the tedious processes that if for those people who who really want to take things into their hands and and don't feel like something is being done unless they are acting upon it co- actively uh he initially gave all these various ways in which that antarayas can be brought to a standstill now he is going to simpler ways that it, all of this is not needed by your own nature you can subdue those chitta vikshepas or through a brilliant state of mind when you uh, are free from sorrow those are subdued and the next one when the chitta is free from the objects of raga or vitara if it can also be calm and pleasant when it is devoid of entanglement with the objects of the senses vita is devoid of vishayam is the objects of raga is the those that cause pleasantness so they, these are the complementary words raga and dvesha raga is attachment entanglement is feeling pleasant towards dvesha is feeling antagonized towards so either either uh, being attached with or being averse to so e- e- these are the complementary words F- by keeping the 
माइंड डी वॉइड ऑफ राग विषय इट कैन स्टिल बी कॉन्टेंट एंड अन अन फ्लटरिंग एंड अन फेस्ड स्वप्न निद्रा ज्ञान स्वप्न निद्रा ज्ञानालंबन वा और बाई सीकिंग द सपोर्ट इन द नॉलेज ऑफ ड्रीम एंड स्लीप स्टेट्स दिस इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग सूत्र बिकॉज आई एम गेसिंग दिस इज इन द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ मेनी ऑफ इज लिसनिंग टू दिस एज वेल have you noticed that uh, sometimes the dreams that you had in the uh, night before are extremely clear and uh, sometimes i mean it's it's best to of course not have any dream dreamless deep states of sleep but when you are doing if any anybody who is practicing yoga sadhana you do your yoga sadhana very intensely on one particular day and there is a dream that happens the next day you are able to recollect it and kind of see it very vividly very clearly you can recollect it but when the sleep is disturbed or you are not your sadhana is on again off again then even despite you knowing that there was this kind of either a you know pleasant or an unpleasant dream or whatever dream it was despite it being vivid during the dream state uh after you wake up it's not as clear but your ability to recollect it and to be able to analyze it and and just know that okay this no clearly that this is dream and this is reality it becomes much more clearer when your sadhana is on i don't know if anybody uh, 1.38 needs explain that is why i have stopped <laughs> um so this might i don't know if this is evident in everybody's life but that is what this stay this sutra states that one other method of keeping the mind pleasant is through the knowledge is, to, is seeking support in the knowledge by knowing that this is what is this is what my dream was and this is what has caused my dream and because the, the subject of dreams in itself why dreams are caused and and what do they represent is a whole shastra in itself but by by applying that knowledge by seeking support in that knowledge the chitta can be kept pleasant i know that by experience in in a complementary way in 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 a in a converse sort of way where uh, it's not the the knowledge of sleep and dreams itself is not the sadhana but because of sadhana the knowledge of sleep and dreams become clearer so it it works in both in in vice versa ways also but this is one of the ways in which one can keep the mind clear and again i many people might uh, might be following different uh, different gurus different kinds of sadhana i personally follow isha foundations yoga and sadguru's uh, practices there is shambhavi mahamudra there is shakti chalana kriya there is shunya uh, and uh, there is uh, there are the different components of uh, hatha yoga anga mardana and yoga asana and surya kriya and surya shakti uh, all of these practices are i don't want to give it a, give it a number but these practices give you a much more much quicker result and and much and they get you to these states quickly of course you can keep understanding and pondering over all of these uh, but um, putting it to practice as as kriya or hatha is much i i have found in my experience for me to be much more uh, much more tangible in terms of results than gnana so uh, sadguru says keeps it uh, puts it across this way so human capabilities there are we all of us are born with a body there is there is a physical body that we can employ there are, there are there's our thought that we can employ there is the we have emotional faculties that we can work with our emotions or we can work with the life breath itself the energy that powers all of this uh, the energy circuit that animates us all so there are these are the four instruments that you have at your disposal if you work on your uh, body and want to hone it to a certain level of capability that it it becomes a conduit to understand the true nature of existence and your own self that is the process of hatha yoga where you are just working on your body you are you are adamant you do you don't want to uh, uh get uh, 
uh, get in, get deviated by these uh, this sutras and this knowledge and these discourses or by bhakti or all this stuff you know you have your physical body you want to just work on it and there is that is hatha yoga there is jnana yoga where you uh, employ you sharpen your intellect in, to such a degree that you can you can distinguish very clearly between what is truth and what is untruth and then that becomes such razor sharp intellect that uh, it 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 penetrates all the deepest secrets of creation and reveals the truth to you and this this pursuit of all this yoga sutras all and and, and uh, the intellectual pursuit of of the knowledge of yoga and the knowledge of atman and all that the the theory of brahman and the jivatma and the paramatma all that is a is an outpouring of people going in the this pursuit of knowing the truth through intellectual pursuits it is uh, it is possible but it is uh, it is highly tricky that one might get deluded very easily uh, that oh now i know the truth but only uh, uh, but be fooling themselves into a false sense of reality but hatha yoga is not like that if it, the body does not <laughs> lie you, you you are either there you are physically there or you, you can do your asana and stay in it and and be immersed in it or you cannot so it doesn't delude you but the mind is kind of tricky so this jnana yoga is is not for uh, is not in everybody's appetite that is why and, and of course there is bhakti yoga where you employ your emotions and this is probably the most the trickiest of all <laughs> uh, because uh, the, it's, it's really really easy to fall into the trap of bhakti versus business so and uh, and it's not exactly looked up and it's not looked upon in the world because bhakta hatha yogis and jnana yogis and kriya yogis and all of these people they seem to have some benefits to the society at large devotees and uh, they like true devotees they like doesn't matter it like uh, all this drama of of knowledge and, and putting oneself through the pain of hatha yoga so this seems pointless so they are just lost in their own bhakti and then there are kriya there is the working on the breath itself which is kriya uh where you ra- you raise the intensity of life energy itself to such a high pitch that uh that you ra- it rises you it raises you above all of the other mundane aspects of living and being being bogged down by these compulsive cyclical tendencies all of them are just broken through so uh, and and of course there is karma yoga which is again with the body itself that you just you stick to your duty and you uh, you perform action without an expectation uh, expectation of result and all that and uh, what there are beautiful stories which depict that all of these are like four wheels of a vehicle and all of them have to be fu- if all of them function in their own in and to to their own their fullest that is when your progress is uh is fastest otherwise only one of them is running the others are not not there your your path gets unnecessarily uh tedious so i i got into all of that just to let you know that to understand these kind of sutras more than just analytically no, Uh, you know tediously meticulously analyzing it and and looking and thinking of dreams and going into that especially when you start thinking of dreams you can can really take you down uh, uh, down rabbit holes and 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 fancies of hallucinations but what will unfailingly get you there is either in my opinion either hatha yoga that uh, or kriya yoga which do not give you that scope of deluding yourself into false senses of reality and which demand that sense of rigor and uh, discipline so though though my vote would go to those those forms of practices but yes uh, the coming to the literal sanskrit meaning of this stotra the vikshepas of chitta chitta prasadanam can happen through one of the way uh, one other way is through swapna nidra gnana alambanam through the support through seeking support in the knowledge of what sleep is and what the dream states are yes i just did that vishnu ji i okay i hope you found that useful to some degree
but this can be a really tricky path to get into just you start picking up picking your dreams apart this is the most freeing of all the sutras probably yatha abhimata dhyana dva or through meditation upon any object of one's desire he says okay you can do this 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 you can pick dreams apart you can uh, do uh, artha bhavana and all that or yatha abhimata dhyana whatever you want to pick as your object of meditation you pick something doesn't matter a stone doesn't matter a leaf flower fruit sun moon a mountain snake earth or a cow or or your own father mother your guru or your nose or your does not matter pick something that <laughs> that grabs your desire abhimata it's the choice is up to you but you meditate upon that we look at what dhyana is in uh, in sadhana pada there he defines all these different states of dhyana itself but by dhyana on whatever you whatever object of your choice the mind becomes chitta vikshepa start become becoming subdued okay until 39 we talked about all these chitta vikshepa or they formed one one particular set from sutras when did we start uh 30 to 39 form one set of dealing with different kinds of antarayas what the ch- what chitta is and uh, what are the different ways of vi- what different kinds of vikshepas and antarayas and what they lead to vik- what are the vikshe- vikshepa sahabhavas what are born along what are the consequences of these vikshepas and how to bring that uh, antara and how antaraya abhava happens and various different ways in which one can uh, bring that sense of calmness and stillness chitta prasadanam there is ways of bringing it about we have looked at from 30 to 39 now we'll go to the 40th sutra from here the uh, context what the segment this the 40 to 50 uh, talk about a different aspect of of samadhi pada here he says paramanu parama mahatvanto asya vashikara to the one who is whose chitta has been completely pacified and and the one who has gained control complete control over one's own mental compulsive cyclical activities such a person has uh, even for such a person asya f- for him asya is for him paramanu the tiniest paramanu does not literally mean an atom it can come to mean an atom but even the tiniest an anim anu literally means that that which is extremely small even the tiniest and mahat is that which is extremely large even the most enormous not both in terms of, in in all senses of these words either be it and be it knowledge be it positions be it be it the reality of existence be it whatever the even the tiniest the minutest and the greatest the largest of aspects of existence are within the grasp of such a person for we, of what kind of a person of that kind of a person who has control over one's own self to have to grasp that which is tiny or large or something else or something else it is not there that your focus has to be it is not you do not go in pursuit of that but rather you work on your own chitta and your own internal capabilities and that that will eventually lead to gaining mastery and grasp in, and bringing it into the uh, unto one's own grasp even the tiniest and the minute and the largest of that which is there to grasp in this existence so in this sutra so he has started as you have seen talking about what kind of states what kind of benefits uh what kind of attainments this this state of samadhi or this state of yoga is going to bestow upon somebody here he says kshina vritte abhijata seva mane grahitr grahana grahyeshu tatstha tadanjanata i'll repeat this word 
ಸಮಾಪತ್ತಿ ಐ ಹೋಪ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ವಾಸ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಅ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಬಿಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಟಂಗ್ ಟ್ವಿಸ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ತತ್ಸ್ಥತಂಜನತ ತತ್ ಸ್ಥ ತತ್ ಅಂಜನತ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ತತ್ಸ್ಥತಂಜನತ ಸಮಾಪತ್ತಿ ದಿಸ್ ಡಿಫೈನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಕ್ಷೀಣ ವೃತ್ತೆ ಕ್ಷೀಣ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಡಿಕೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಡಿಕಂಪೋಸಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ ಆರ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಡೌನ್ ಸೊ ಆರ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಸಬ್ಡ್ಯೂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕ್ಷೀಣ ವಾಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಕ್ಷೀಣ ವಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಸಬ್ಡ್ಯೂಡ್ ವೃತ್ತೀಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಕಂಪಲ್ಸ್ activities here kshina vritte have been subdued to so the one who is whose compulsive cyclical activities have been subdued abhijatasya eva mane one whose mind is abhijata has is clearing up is becoming like money like a crystal whose mind is because he, it's not no longer under the grip of this it's not constantly just running it's it's uh, subdued and it's all these activities are have come to a standstill so the mind whose mind has now cleared up is come clearing up like crystal like money grahitra grahitra is the word grah you know grahita or grahitra the roots word literally means the one who consumes the one who takes in uh and grahana is the act of consumption taking in grahana the word also the eclipse is also it's used to or eating also is grahana grahana literally means taking something in and grahya that which is being take, taken in so in any interaction with the outside world where in sensory input is happening there is somebody who is uh, there are three entities there is the one who is consuming it there is the one who is enjoying the one who is the receiver there is the process of reception the activity itself grahana and then there is that which is received grahya these three things which are usually three in distinctly different entities but once these cyclical compulsive cyclical tendencies of the mind come to a stand still then grahitra grahana grahyeshu among these three different entities of grahita the one who consumes grahana the act of consumption and grahya the, the that which is taken in not just physical substances not just thoughts in all senses of these words the processes of because uh, in all these grahya shu among these three entities in a transaction tatstha tadanjanata the sense capable the capability of being established as one is the state of samapatti so the word samapatti the st- or the state samapatti is defined as being as seeing oneself in all these three entities if that makes sense that state of oneness where there is no longer just uh, you know you don't you no longer see these three things are as distinct whenever you're doing things in the world all your actions are done in that state of realization that these three things are no longer different it's not that you know there is something else and there is you there there's just you you and you alone that state is samapatti all right perfect the picture makes clear sense apparently all right i'm glad otherwise just with the text it it would have been really <laughs> uh um, really a hard task to convey what is being mentioned but yes the picture gives interpretations of what what it could mean and it uh, by by what i am uh, what i say there is a lot of impressions of uh of there, there's a lot of limitation as to what i can convey just through text and and words but images yes it's very uh, very useful I'm, i'm really glad i put these in and thank you meghna shout out to meghna and uh, yes the next sutra 42nd sutra says tatra shabdartha gnana vikalpaihi sankirna savitarka samapatti it's he is again describing it as when that compulsive cyclical activities of the mind come to a stand still there tatra comes the capability of 
ಸವಿತರ್ಕ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಸಮಾಪತ್ತಿ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಟೈನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆರ್ ಇಟ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಸವಿತರ್ಕ ಸಮಾಪತ್ತಿ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಸವಿತರ್ಕ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸವಿತರ್ಕ ಸಮಾಧಿ ದಿಸ್ ಯುನೈಟ್ಸ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶಬ್ದ ಅರ್ಥ ಅಂಡ್ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಮೆನಿ ಮೆನಿ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರೇಟರ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದ ಶಂಕರ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೆನಿ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೆನಿ ಅದರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಸ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡನ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ದೇರ್ ಓನ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಲುಕ್ ಆಟ್ ಇಟ್ ದೇರ್ ದೀಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಫೋಲ್ಡ್ ಎಂಟಿಟೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಲುಕ್ ಲೈಕ್ ತ್ರೀ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಆರ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ತ್ರೀ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಬಟ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಅಪಿಯರ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಇನ್ ಎಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಫೋಲ್ಡ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಟು ಮರ್ಜ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಅನದರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಸೊ ಆ ಓಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮ್ ಆರ್ ನೋ ಲಾಂಗರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಕ್ ಸೌಂಡ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಒನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ವೇ ದ ದ ಸಿಯರ್ ದ ಸೀನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಸಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ ನೋ ಲಾಂಗರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಕ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಆರ್ ಒನ್ ಸೀಸ್ ಒನ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಅಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಶಬ್ದ ಅರ್ಥ ಅಂಡ್ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೌಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಕನ್ವೇಸ್ if i i hope this distinction is clear if not you have to it's not something that uh, i can put put in words and then you'll get it uh, so there are many examples of course this uh, image itself shows it so there is shabda there is which which denotes something for example dhenu is the shabda or uh, let's look at something simpler okay uh, so there is nadi which is a shabda which is the sound the, when i say nadi there is there many of you might know already that it means a river but the sound the word nadi is just at the level of sound its artha is na na the the word the comes from dana or diya diya te that which gives what na the uh, the root sound na uh, is literally means warmth and life so narmada and and that that sense of the one the giver of life the giver of plenty and bounty and and life is a nadi that is the artha of it and the gnana of it as yes it is actually something that gives life and brings about that bounty that gnana is one is these three initially seem like three distinctly different things there is a sound there is the meaning of it and there is the knowledge of it the sound the meaning and the knowledge seem like three different things but they all of them are contained within one another they are they are the same thing i don't know if this is this point is getting across but i i hope it does what helps you if it does not yet is the practice of yoga itself the sadhana itself and i hope it uh, nadi example perfect perfect wonderful thank you um so then this in that savitarka samadhi the sound the meaning of that sound and the knowledge that is conveyed is united it's, it becomes one all right the next sutra says smriti parishuddhav swarupa shunyeva artha matra nirbhasa nirvitarka so in savitarka samadhi when being in that state of savitarka samadhi those things that are manifest as three different things start becoming united when the other state of samadhi nirvitarka samadhi that was savitarka now in nirvitarka samadhi when even the imprints of one's memory clears up when even the imprints of memory clear up and if it feels like one's own form is absent 
such a state where only artha or essence remains and the shabda and the gnana of it is no longer relevant but only the essence of it remains is called as nirvitarka samadhi so this samadhi this nirvitarka is uh, once so we were we're talking about as i said in the uh, in the midway point uh, we start we that i uh, we go, we are going to look at deeper and deeper states of meditativeness there was um, what sampragnata samadhi and uh, asampragnata samadhi and then we we'll now we are now looking at savitarka and the next deeper level of medita- meditativeness even on top of savit savitarka savitarka itself is where all the knowledge has become one but swarupa shunya you you no longer have your own identity with your own form in savitarka that remained then you experience yourself as as the one in all of those now only the essence that that unites all of this remains and in your own form itself is gone that is the nirvitarka so it's it's one step deeper than savitarka and these are all experiential states where you can it, you can only talk about <laughs> about the sweetness of sugar so much you open your mouth and put that sugar then you know oh, this is what sugar, what's that sweetness is so all of these states are are only known as reality are the, the only way to know them uh, for that matter is to be in them and the the tricky thing about nirvitarka is once you this many of these states is once even the thought comes that you are in that state you are no longer in that state so it's in some ways uh, this knowledge can come as a as as a hindrance but in some ways it is a possibility that you know that these states are possible and this is the benefit of these states we are looking at the next few uh, uh, padas we'll also look at different kinds of attainments and benefits that these being in these states bring about uh, so yes one a deeper state of meditativeness where one's imprints of memory of past clears up and one's own form which is the con- which is the consequence of all the memory that we have gathered so far that is why the form is the way it is so one's attachment even with the form is loosened and only the essence of what is 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 what is left that state is nirvitarka samadhi these two states savitarka and nirvitarka are the subtle states of being that is what is said as etayaiva savichara nirvichara cha sukshma vishaya vyakhyata when uh, vyakhyata is when they talk about is they are talked about because in patanjali's time all all of these states were all already being talked about yoga is not invented by him he's he just systematized these principles so the those that which is talked about a subtler state of being as by many people you should not live in a gross state of existence you have to rise to a subtler state of being that subtlety that sukshma vishaya that state of subtleness that all these people talk about are these two these two which are known as savichara nirvichara or savitarka and nirvitarka they are alternative words for both savichara is savitarka and nirvichara nirvitarka these two states are what are called what are mentioned what are referred to when somebody says subtler states of being these states of savitarka nirvitarka anything be, below that the sampragnata asampragnata despite them being samadhis they are they are not exactly sukshma you are not in a subtler state of being you are in a in a your chitta is pleasant pleasanter relatively pleasant compared to what it is and that is still samadhi equanimous state of being but it can only be called as one's own existence it can only be called, uh, called as sukshma or subtle when one is in the states of savitarka and nirvitarka samadhis etayaiva savichara nirvichara cha sukshma vishaya vyakhyata why is it still being called subtle and and not just dissolution because sukshma vishayatvancha alinga paryavasanam 
linga or form linga here is the little meaning of it is form and it is because of this form that it's because of this the cause paryavasanam it's because of that form which one is even when one's own attachment with the form is swarupa shunya happened in nirvitarka when one's own form was no longer uh in one's perception but the arthamartha arthamatra nirbhasa nirvitarka if you remember the definition of nirvitarka so that essence remained and because that still remained paryavasanam because of that because of as a consequence of that it is called as sukshma sukshma vishaya if that so sukshma vishaya tvancha it's once we think we perceive it it stops to exist yes um, so because of that form still remaining it is only called as sukshma still ta eva sabija samadhi these two states of being savitarka nirvitarka samadhis those two it's literally tau eva it, in co- combination it becomes ta eva sabija samadhi those two states of equanimity those two states of samadhi are called as sabija samadhi sabija literally meaning the source or the cause of all of this is still functioning sa bija including sa bija the source or the seed in nirvitar in savitarka and nirvitarka even if they are sat, they they are capable they are worthy of being called as subtler states of existence sukshma vishayatvam uh sukshma vishayah and that sukshma sukshma vishayatvam is because of ling paryavasanam linga paryavasanam and those two are called as sabija samadhis because the cause uh, is still present if one comes out of it i mean it, it can that that compulsive cyclical uh, tendencies can still hold on they can they still have their sway that, that so the cause of this still exists the seed is not burnt yet so that is why it is called as sabija the b, sabija is the bija is still alive um in the next state we will see and nirvi the next sutra says nirvichara vaisharadhye adhya nirvichara vaisharadhye adhyatma prasadah this symbol here is an avagraha which says there is an a here adhyatma prasada adhyatma is the, that is the best word to describe describe what is considered as spirituality the realm of spirituality so by in that by continuously staying in the state of nirvitarka or nirvichara samadhi vaishara visharada you might have heard this visharada by being skilled or experts in by continuously staying in that state of nirvichara samadhi which itself is very it's a profound state of sukshma state of of uh, being uh, even swarupa itself is is swarupa shunyatvam happens there in nirvichara samadhi by con- constantly saying staying in that state of nirvichara samadhi does one enter the realm of spirituality or adhyatma before that happens spirituality is just a word only if one co- constantly stays in that sense of nirvichara samadhi does one enter the states of adhyatma or spirituality one thing that i can say is the best the sim- no uh, one practical way one practical way of getting there is through giving oneself to isha yoga practices for sure uh, and and going through shambhavi mahamudra and shakti chalana kriya after which they initiate you into a practice called shunya the 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 full the better you give yourself to these practices the deeper states of meditation they take you to but uh, instead of here i i'm i wouldn't say utterly hopeless but uh, trying to get to these states of meditativeness just by textual pursuits to me seems utterly hopeless because there are better ways of getting there and and especially when there are gurus who can pro- provide you such practices but yes when 
you constantly stay in that state of nirvichara samadhi and you become visharada or or skilled and competent in that nirvichara samadhi you enter the realm of adhyatma or spirituality this this the realm of spirit of of the self becomes starts becoming evident wait seven there are 51 sutras in all there is a limit to the buffer how many images can it load at once all right i hope everybody can now uh, see the uh, 47th sutra okay 48 perfect um, i'm sure yes vipassana art of living and and there are many many gurus guys it's not see if you uh, keep yourself away from the the smear campaigns that uh, media runs wasted media runs you will see that there are tens of gurus at least across bharat i don't want to compare one with the other but all of them trustworthy it's it's it, that that is the sense of trust right it's it's our tradition it's our culture you go there you look around and you it's it's not really that hard to to find out if you are being conned or if they are, if the, what what you what the offer is true so i can definitely with hands on my heart say isha foundation is 100% genuine i i'm 99.99% sure i that 0.01 is because i have not personally done it art of living is of course very powerful and many of my friends have vouched with their lives for sudarshana kriya which art of living teaches so and vipassana of course is uh, it has been being passed down through generations and there are many many gurus i don't want to take each of them by names because there are many other smear campaigns being run by many people oh, the only foundation that i'd love to just stick by is isha foundation because i have personally benefited tremendously from them by them but all of these it's it's not really that hard and it pains my heart to see when uh when people start uh, abusing or when when people start uh discrediting these gurus who work their life tirelessly who spend so and 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 it's very obvious and and clear to see that what they offer is extremely beneficial but despite that there are large groups of people who are somehow hell bent on going against them and somehow maligning their reputation and saying they're out there only for profit or or influence or some other other thing but i i'm sure in every, anybody who knows a little bit of 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 what their roots are can clearly differentiate between what is uh, what is conning and what is genuinely valuable so yes all of these good and one of the biggest fortunes of this land is that we are born in in a place which which is literally a spring it's it's a well of spirituality it's a, it it oozes such abundance of of spiritual well being and we somehow distance ourselves from it so yes all the gurus who are being mentioned uh, it's it's very easy guys it's not really that hard if you go there you do the practice for yourself they offer practices it's not like they ask you to you know uh enlist as a as a as a soldier for their cause they offer you practices simply practice them with with that genuinity that that longing to reach there and if the practice works great that that's that's all that is needed that is what they are there for uh, as well so do not please do not go with uh, all this smear campaigns that are run by people for their own vested interests um the the immense benefit we, i mean i constantly i'm in in unfathomable and in an inexpressible gratitude towards 
all these lineages all these parampara of gurus who have been passing down down these these knowledge systems and these traditions and these practices so yes if you don't want to enlist or you know don't want to join a cult this this word also has become so popular to all these people all the art of living shri shri ravi shankar ji sadguru and uh, all the other these are the popular ones there are many not so popular ones many who has whose name has already been dragged through the dirt but uh, just do the practices see if it works for you if it works for you keep it if not not necessary anyways let's not uh, go there uh if yeah you practice you give yourself to the practice practice it for one mandala at least which is a psych- physiological cycle that the body goes through peri- a period of a maximum period of 48 days 42 to 48 depending on your own body it goes through a certain cycle so go through a maximum 48 day cycle in that process itself i'm sure uh, there are millions of people who have benefited from it anyways so any practice that you take up stick to it for one mandala if it works for you nobody has to tell you that this is you, that you have to keep it keep up with it anymore anyways coming to the 48th sutra ritam bhara tatra pragnya kutra ver kutra is ver in in marathi it is a dog but in sanskrit it's ver kutra tatra there where is that there we have slightly deviated from this in that adhyatma prasada in that realm of spirituality once you enter that realm which is truly spiritual and not just the word that is used that i am a spiritual person just because i uh, i do uh, i don't know to <laughs> name any practices but just just for the name sake that you you think about these things you you just uh, you just think about uh, fanciful thoughts it's not spiritual once you really are in the realm of you you are skilled and competent and you stay in nirvichara samadhi and gain competence there once you enter the realm of spirituality tatra there pragnya the state of perception ritam bhara it is filled with the truths of co- of the cosmos rita there is satya which is reality as we experience it in the physical world which is satya and there is rita which is the cosmic truth which which is the, which does not deal with uh, the truths of physical world but of the nature of creation itself that is what is mentioned as the true reality of existence the nature of the truth of how how life functions which is unchanging how how people should function with each other how the society functions how what is wrong what is right what is legal what is illegal all all of that uh, of satyas of of prapanchika satyas the sarutha is that eternal truth which is unchanging so it the per, one's perception once opens up to these truths of the cosmos and that is when uh, you realize things so there is there is, satya can be known you can know truth by just reading about it by thinking about it by contemplating upon it by re- making it reality in your existence but when you perceive truth which is not known before not because not from some book or some person but just with you with your perception that state of perception is called as ritambhara or or that state of perception which is filled with the truth of true reality of existence and uh, okay <laughs> i jumped the gun again and explained uh, the next sutra uh, anya vishaya that ritambhara pragnya is a different anya anya is different anya vishaya it is a different thing from what from shruta and anumana pragnya shruta anumana pragnya bhyam from these two states of shruta and anumana pragnya which is heard and inferred perception shruta again means heard or or experience for oneself one knowing known for oneself oh as prapanchika satya that it this ritambhara pragnya is different from shruta pragnya and anumana pragnya because of an ex, because of a vishesha artha because so uh, as we look at the meaning the knowledge of this reality is unique anya vishaya and, and different from that which is normally perceived through one senses and logic through shruta meaning heard meaning all the all the logical Uh, inputs that we get that is one level of perception anumana pragnya is by inference by logic we can we can 
we can perceive to a different degree but ritambhara pragna is different from perception through senses and through one's own logic due to its nature of being all encompassing it it doesn't it it's not limited to one particular thing vishesha it it does not leave anything so generally knowledge is about one one thing or the other this knowledge that we get through the senses is about one particular thing or through logic is about one particular thing it's not all encompassing knowledge but this ritam the knowledge that we get through ritam bhara pragna does not leave anything else as remainders that knowledge there of life is all encompassing um again this has to be known for known as truth and uh, uh yeah let me leave it there uh, so that that ritam bhara pragna it's enormously enormously uh empowering uh, so that you do not have to rely on books or or inferred inferred knowledge anymore you just perceive the truth there is for what it is just through your perception itself tajja sanskara anya sanskara pratibandhi the sanskara or the latent impressions that are born from this kind of a perception this perception of course creates these impressions any kind of perception of course it's perception because it's creating those impressions within us that impressions the the, the impressions which are born from ritambhara pragna tad ja the sound ja means to be born janma janani ja mean or, or jala ja ja meaning to be born sanskara tajja sanstat jaha sanskara the sanskara which is born from ritam bhara pragnya anya sanskar the it, or anya meaning other sanskara are impressions pratibandhi they prevent they constrain or they they repel uh, they they protect one against all the other latent impressions so one sanskara or one's latent impressions that that one's tendencies the inherent impressions the or sanskara can roughly also be translated as culture one becomes truly cultured and that culture that level of culturing within removes and protects one's from all sorts of other latent tendencies and impressions which are compulsive which are you know all the other uh, uh limiting and compulsive tendencies that are within this sanskara which is born out of ritambhara pragna repels and 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 protects one from all of the other sanskaras tasya api nirodhe sarva nirodhan nirbijah samadhi when even that sanskara those latent tendencies from ritambhara pragna which is of course an enormous level of empowerment when even that is brought to a stand still when one obtains control over that as well sarva nirodha there is nothing else to control there you are absolute master over everything nirbija samadhi that is when this uh, one is said to enter the state of nirbija samadhi where even the seed within is burnt off so there is no longer uh compulsive tendencies and cyclic you are not subject to cycles of birth and death and all these compulsive cycles anymore because there is nothing left that is absolute sense of dissolution and and unity with the existence around so this is going beyond this is this is known by many many names so by uh, i am absolute control over even the sanskaras born out of ritambhara pragna uh with by absolute control over everything sarva nirodha nirbija no no seed left samadhi and this finishes patanjali yoga sutras iti patanjali virachite yoga sutre prathamah padah sama prathamah samadhi padah thus is the first chapter in the yoga sutras compiled by sage com- written by sage patanjali called as samadhi pad the first chapter called as samadhi pad all right now let us look at questions what is the seed the seed is the cause that uh, the, it's the is the source of life within you it's 
where that that latent impression it's the it's the memory bank that caused all of this and and is the seed yeah seed you don't know you're born everything is born because of a seed no that seed all right i'm i'm really glad that uh, we how how long did it take us this was the first time i um, went through a, an an effort like this so we started at 10 o'clock now it is 1 o'clock not bad wonderful all right let's look at questions let's take uh, half an hour and uh, look at questions okay isn't the seed god himself who is god we looked at the definition of god we looked at ishvara so okay let let's do this um <laughs> zygote is seed yes of course and even before that um, yes you can look at that as a seed um oh you didn't realize it i'm thank you so much i'm glad guys i'm i'm glad you found it useful uh let us look at the questions if you have questions please post it in the ask a question section not in the chat box so that i'll am able to look at it clearly and answer it one by one and not miss out anything which is relevant for everybody i'll look at uh, the questions which has most upvotes first people have already started answering uh <laughs> answering questions for others uh if i have to okay let me leave you with the concluding thoughts at the end uh, the first question by uh, animesh ji animesh ji asks how can i join your sanskrit language learning course please okay so we have given a pause to vakshuddhi because i I'd, i'd love i mean despite me having the inclination to conduct as many classes as possible i still want to protect my throat and and do and and i'm actually working we are all working on uh, uh, panchatantra which is coming up so there is uh, we want to take it at our own pace and especially with all of this going on in the world we don't want to put people through their paces we want to take it at our own uh, leisurely time there will be a next batch of course for for now we'll go through uh, patanjali yoga sutras so for uh, the month of june there will be no vakshuddhi classes for vakshuddhi classes will continue on july in the month of july and the registrations for those will open up in june so but the links for registration will uh, is again the same a uh, link bit.ly forward slash sanskrit hyphen course you can uh, keep so if registrations open up they open up at, in the last week and i'll post it on the channel as well so you can keep checking that link the form there once the form opens up there you i mean you it will have all the details even now it has the details as to uh when the next batch will start uh but once the form opens up there you can register for the course prithvi ji asks please give details about the next level of learning course after vakshuddhi uh yes as i was saying uh, there are multiple uh, projects so this one is unique on its own patanjali yoga sutras there is uh, panchatantra that we are working on as a, this is the first time i am reading it as well i am taking time to read it and, and interpret it and, and try to understand it as much as possible before i i take it up i offer it as a course and as i as i learn it i am loving the text guys panchatantra is trust me it's not a children's book it's not at all the the way it is written in original sanskrit for the world that we live in right now there will be uproar uh i'm i'm hoping it, i can make it to children above uh, 13 years of age uh but uh, one one thing that is what that can be promised by uh, panchatantra is it is a text which will make you experts in dharma shastra artha shastra and kama shastra dharma artha and kama moksha we are doing anyways right now patanjali yoga sutras uh, so wonderful after this we'll try uh, this this was unintentional we started moksha first and then we'll go to panchatantra which so this is what vishnu sharma pledges right the exact words that he uses is hear me roar now about uh, hear me claim that i am going to make your sons experts in dharma artha and kama shastras by the end of 6 months if i am unable to do it you can i'll i'll give up my name and reputation you can uh, you can happily send me uh, uh, send me uh, upwards so send uh, you can happily kill me and i'll not say no this is what he pledges in the beginning of the text itself so panchatantra is is quite a uh, how do i put it it's it's not pg 13 so 
uh, I'll, I'll look at how to present it. But so Panchatantra is going to be the next course. I don't know, again, the format of how to offer it. Uh, should we do an interactive session like this or should I just make videos on it? We'll look at it. Uh, but again, there is a Bhasha Prayogaha. That will definitely be a course. But again, I want to really focus on just Vakshuddhi for now. There have been four batches so far. So before I, uh, and there have been around, uh, maybe roughly around two, 3,000 people. Uh, and only a small percentage of them have, of course, uh, paid the course fee. But anyways, uh, we'll, we'll try uh, to see how, how to manage all these things together and, and uh, make the best out of it. I'll keep it posted whenever the next course is available. The next course, whatever it may be, I am I have planned it around uh, Guru Purnima. That is the conscious plan. I don't know how much of it will be possible, but we'll definitely try to do something by, uh, for Guru Purnima, which is July 24th or 23rd, last week of July. Pragal Bhaji asks, is the poetic meter for any chant given in the chant or is it figured out looking at the composition or if it is so, how do we do so? The poetic meter is nothing but the sequence of uh, sequence of syllables in in a line. So it is in the composition itself. You look at the pattern in which the syllables go, uh, the long and the short vowels, how they alternate. So sadanchita mudanchita is one. There is a, a, so there is of course shivatandava stotram jata nana 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 nana. So one long syllable followed by one short syllable. So there are, and uh, there is Guru Paduka Sutram, na 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 So Shariram, Surupam. And that, so it's, you, it's there in the composition itself, Pragalji. <laughs> in the comments, he said, upward this to get thousand years of good luck. <laughs> okay, done answering. Wonderful. All right, may a thousand years of good luck to everybody. Uh, for with four upwards, Vinayji asks, "Now please give some more details how to experience someone like me who wants to experience sutras with Guru. I know it is vast. All right, probably this is the time to uh, give give some recommendations of practices. Uh, let me start with the simplest. The simplest practice is Isha Kriya. It's a fifteen minute practice. It's extremely simple and safe, and and but at the same time extremely powerful and potent. You do it for a mandala period, forty eight days." Take it as 48. It starts it's between 42 to 48. But do it for 48. And I can I can vouch for the practice that it is definitely extremely, extremely powerful. It's a 15-minute practice. It's extremely simple. And you can do it on your own, learn it on your own. If you have, I, I don't know how many of, of the centers of the yoga centers are offering a core, their sessions and programs anymore. But uh, one thing these if you have the time on top of uh, Isha Kriya. You can definitely uh, enroll yourself for Shambhavi Mahamudra offered by uh, Isha Foundation or Sudarshana Kriya offered by Art of Living. Listen to both Sadhguru and uh, Shri Shri Ravi Shankarji talk. See how what, what appeals to you more. It's not that, you know, one, it's not one pill for all. It, depending on your own tendencies, what you are, you are looking for, what you are drawn towards, uh, and if you if you intensify that longing to know, right, it's not that you have to choose a guru. I, I can know this. I, I can tell this because I know this as experience for myself. I was not a guy who was looking for uh, for uh, for a guru. Um, I was just curious about about these things. And as I said, I was just curious to know and learn and, and know that for truth. I did not even I was not in a state of mind to even uh, bow down to another human being and and uh, anyways so i will i can relate with these kinds of thought processes so either attend uh, shambhavi mahamudra or sudarshana kriya practices just listen to the guru's talk there are so many of them available that that is the best part that that uh, that uh, I, I feel strongly about that there's so much we are spoiled for choice when it comes when it comes to spiritual progress in india trust me we are really, really spoiled for choice. So intensify your longing to know these things and uh, you explore it. And I'm sure you'll some you'll find your own answers and your practices, which will. And uh, one thing that again, again, I want to say is it's only the practices which will, uh, which will get you there quickly and which will get you there. Uh, the, the, 
strongly the drudha bhumi of of being in that state uh will it will yield maximum result i am not a guru i have uh, i have a long way to go before i can uh, even uh i don't know if i'll get there uh, so but the, again as i said there are so many people who are there i can teach you sanskrit the best way the best possible way i can but to give you the knowledge of yoga to give you not just knowledge but yoga as a live possibility that is the key that that it's it's a process that grows within you and grows as you nourish it it nourishes you that kind of a process requires diksha and uh, there are we are spoiled for choice when it comes to people who can give us diksha and you you can definitely find somebody avamshi ji as please explain reiterate vibhakti and sandhi of the words oh i guess uh, next for the next session i'll definitely keep this in mind probably now it's too late vibhakti and sandhi you really want grammatical aspects of each of these sutras let me try to incorporate that in in some or the other way thank you for the suggestion vamshi ji uh, vimarsha jain ji asks can you please elaborate how nidra is compulsive really you are not you don't have you don't know that for experience yourself uh vimarsha ji uh nidra of course is a compulsive act isn't it <laughs> uh you really you you so Arj- one of the names of arjuna uh, where he, it's he's called as guda kesha krishna refers to him as guda kesha multiple times and this story is also said about krishna devaraya that they were they conquered their sleep sleep is basically rest for the body the rest for the physical process and the thought process so you rejuvenate your the the way sadguru puts it is the amount of uh, energy that you spend is is at a certain level throughout the day sleep is that time where the le- amount of energy that is generated is more than amount of energy that is consumed in your daily activities so after a certain time you feel replenished and rejuvenated but that is not necessarily that is not necessitated if you can keep your body in such a way that the amount of energy that is consumed that is uh, consumed in your daily activities is is minimal the amount of uh, uh amount of uh turbulence in your mind and in your in your body and in your activity is minimal and you only do activity to such an extent that it is necessary and at the same time the energy cap- the generation of energy capabilities in your body is high and optimal then your body is eternally at rest you don't need feel the need for sleep anymore and there are other ways of conscious sleep this might feel again completely alien a concept but you can sleep consciously so when that happens uh sadguru says again that your capability to manifest things that you want to manifest in the world goes up enormously so the sleep as we know it right now is of course compulsive you uh, if you stay awake on the on the night of mahashivratri you see hundreds of people dozing off like compulsively of course it is compulsive i don't know why i have to explain this but uh, all right if you you have to pay some more attention vimarsha ji you can uh, notice that for yourself but uh, again i can only give this as textual knowledge and just information all of these sutras whatever we have learned so far it is they are not just to be known as some extra information for uh, for tea table conversations you spend some time uh, see how you can relate it uh, how how you can see them as as what is happening in your own life anvaya as i called it so you see how how it is true for your own life is it is it really all these states right right from the five states of being are these the only things why don't you take it up as a challenge and see are these the only things is there something else patanjali is missing then you know then you identify each of them as truth and then you live that uh, live that truth live that knowledge textual knowledge it is only then that these are of some use in one's own life otherwise it's just Three hours of entertainment, uh, and 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 not not really that that quality entertainment as well. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Vamshi ji asks. Okay, yeah, I have answered this question. Bala ji ji asks. Uh, can you share some of your personal experiences after performing the sadhana? Um, 
maybe at some other time maybe at the end of the session i i did put in some other some glimpses i don't want to uh, draw too much attention to that uh, everybody sadhana is their own personal thing of course i can i mean uh, in in some parts i think i glanced over it and and to some extent but yes as i said i am nowhere near uh, near near bija samadhi at least the but one thing that i'm fortunate and one fortunate of of having is glimpses of of these states of yoga which are being talked about and uh, this is what i was uh, like strongly looking for like very very dog headedly uh, pursuing when i started first started reading yoga sutras almost 8 9 years ago and uh, slowly it's and it's again <laughs> i've been in multiple states of uh, the the three states of mrudu madhya and ati matra adhi matra all the three uh, intensities of sadhana uh, anyways so yeah i'll i'll probably again as uh, uh, as i said the same answer for vamshi ji i'll uh, include some anecdotes here and there oh you want me to recite each sutra twice all right mahesh ji all right from here on it looks like uh, not many upwards and uh, we are well ahead of of what we have uh, thought it to take so thank you so much for joining us um, it was it was amazing i hope it was useful to you um as i said once again uh, you can download the resources required through the links below my my video box and uh, if if you have not uh, paid already for the course and i know there are uh, many of you here uh, who are who have paid for it and who have not if you want to you can make use of uh, the links and and the details below in the pay as you wish section um, keep uh, stay healthy guys uh, work on your immunities and uh, please make sure that you uh, keep yourself healthy and keep the others around you uh, healthy uh, thank you so much for joining in uh, all right i see there are more questions coming in we'll address it in the next session this the link to the next session which will happen at 10 am next sunday is the same link uh, so you can come there and uh, we'll continue in the next we'll, i'll see you in the next session thank you so much namaskaram